I apologize for anybody who's watching about how terribly and horribly disorganized this is today. It's only been a month since I tried it's to dual like stream a... anything, and it's kind of a nightmare. That's all right. It means that it, it's you're trying to be like you're trying to be like me. Instead, no, I want to be organized. You're trying to be like you're trying to be like me. Yeah, but you're not, which means you're like me. Yeah, no, I don't no, want to be that I way. I want to be organized. You're trying to be like. <laughs> I don't want to be that way either. It just works out that way. No, I don't want to be that way. Organized. Okay. I don't want to be that way either. It just works out that way. No, I don't want to be that way. Organized. All right, let me get this tweeted out. Okay. Another episode. I apologize for any echo that anyone experiences. We're just I just now get everything tweeted out. So we should be cool. Hopefully people will pop in as they pop in. A couple people have already popped in on YouTube and basically left the thumbs up and said they're going to catch up later. One of them being a television gamer. I think he's got a... Oh, he's outside playing laser tag with the kids. That's kind of awesome. No! That's dope. And Ninja Chat is... Oh, probably didn't catch that one. Probably because it was earlier. There we go. Okay. So we're going to see if anybody pops in. Otherwise, it's just going to be me and you talking to ourselves for like an hour and a half. And this will have just be a very, very uninteresting replay for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> All right, I got it tweeted out though, so everybody okay. will come running. All right, well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a month, not... so everybody kind of forgot we were here. Uh, there's Scepter. He if just popped you, in. It, there you go. See if How's not, it going, you and I haven't talked in a few days, so this will be just good to. And I'm totally clicking on the long, wrong window while I'm doing all this. I gotta do it this way. There we go. That'll be easier. All right. I guess I need that. to pop out the YouTube chat too. Yeah, I mostly Mickey. just pop those out so as people pop in, I can kind of see who's coming and where. Yeah. And uh, keep up well, with the chat and everything you... like that. Yeah. Now the chat's not showing up on the screen. Wonder if that's just. Uh, I don't know. So this happens to me. This is a bug in the social stream ninja. Sometimes it, after like a couple of weeks, you have to go in and oh no, okay, I see Scepter. Never mind. I was about you to say I normally don't have that problem. With social stream ninja. I got it. So mine every like couple of weeks just kind of shuts itself off, and I have to go in and and um, re-show the extension or re like reload the extension and okay. then just. It's weird, and and it's be I don't know if it's because I'm running it for whatever reason. It says to run it as a developer extension. Yeah. Huh? Maybe it's the newer version because I haven't updated in a long time. I was looking at that today too, and decided that was a bad idea. <laughs> 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 I decided it was a terrible idea to do right now. Um, do right, right before, before the, the show, show starts. starts. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Hey, Galaxy. So, so we got Scepter over on YouTube, Galaxy. Oh, what's up, we Galaxy? One. See, we got two guys. We got two. We got two. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing any kind of echo or anything and you can hear everybody okay. Uh, let us know. If not, then uh, we'll just accordingly. Right now we're going to kind of let it ride the way it is. So yeah, let's go I ahead mean, and go to what everybody did this weekend. Out. Mike, you're going to be the long-winded one this weekend because I know what you did this weekend because you were, you were tweeting about but it I literally all weekend long. So go ahead. It was. Mike is echoing. Awesome. I'm echoing? You're echoing. Which is weird because I can't hear an echo. I can't. You're not echoing to me. Am I echoing to you? Yes. You, but you always echo to me. Like all the time. That's bizarre. And I have, I have headphones on. So it's not like it's coming back through my speakers. What in the hell? I don't know. Um... Mike might have an echo, yeah. Let me I, see if I have anything running I shouldn't that might be causing it. Oh, I believe you, Galaxy. I, I totally believe you. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I don't have anything running on mine that would cause it. Because I mean, the first thing I could think of would be that banana thing, but I don't think that's even... It didn't minimize. It's just not there. So and let me see I don't. If I, can I don't have it. anything on my end right now. Um, Hang on, I'm listening. I'm listening back real quick. 
Hold on. Yeah, I'm just flipping between different views because I don't know where that might be coming from. It's almost like a. It's it's not quite like an echo. It's like a. a it's like I have, I have I have a chorus on me. Uh, let me try muting one and unmuting the other. Hang on. Try now. Yeah. All right. See if that's any better. Yeah. It's kind of like I have like a chorus filter on. Yeah, that's how you always sound to me. I switched you over to video audio because it was coming in through there. And muted the other. So now you guys are hearing. Okay, now that was better. Okay. All right. So I had to switch over to the video audio and I just lost Mike. So we'll have Mike try again. All right. Let's, okay. Back. Can you guys hear him? Okay. All right. Let's see if that, see if that's any better. Let me listen live here. I yeah, can, that sounds better. I was about to say, I can never tell. I switched it over to the video audio. Because I had you yeah, on desktop audio. Scepter says, yeah, it sounds okay now, and Scepter okay. says it right, sounds cool. fine. All right, technical difficulties aside. All right. <laughs> continue with your <laughs> well, with your weekend roundup, sir, because you're going to take way longer uh, than I'm going to. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll am i try to condense it as much as possible. Um, went down to Greensboro, North Carolina to go see video games live. I took Seth and Spencer this time. Um, went down... Uh, uh, it was about a six and a half hour drive. Not too bad. Um, stayed over in Greensboro. Um, venue was really nice. Like, like real, like you don't expect, um, oh, that's awesome. Galaxy. Awesome. Um, you don't expect Greensboro, South, uh, North Carolina to be the, to, to have a, uh, a gorgeous, um, symphony hall, but oh my God, they did. Carolina's full uh, of, like all sorts of gorgeous stuff. You'd be you, uh, I, you would be surprised. I I tell you, I wasn't. I also wasn't expecting the Greensboro Symphony Orchestra to be as impressive as they were. Like like, were they the Boston Pops? No. Were they like right there? Yes. Um, and it was a, yeah. It was he a great sounds concert. like that to me too now. Yeah, you're what now? What and, and now you sounded well for a minute. You sounded like you were echoing repeatedly, just like over and over and over again. Uh, it appears they have oh. stopped on mine because I've got the normal echo I'm used to. This one ain't on oh, me, is, man. I switched the audio source. I changed everything over. I, I don't I, hear any echoing okay. at all. Okay. Let me. In fact, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me kick back when I'm one two one two one two. No, it's not. It's okay. not my banana um so um it went ahead it, it was a great concert What's um, up, Oak City? heard some things that heard okay, some so things Galaxy's that i had not now. heard maybe para was behind then she might have been a little bit behind on the stream could be could be go yeah catch up live um hey oak uh, anyway great concert heard some things that i did not hear um last year in um uh, last year in Boston, um, uh, just side note, um, Spencer, uh, Spencer dressed up. So Spencer's in his Willy Wonka phase. He is like, in like he's had his Lone Ranger phase. He's had his, um, uh, his star Wars phase. He is now in his Willy Wonka phase. So I he has watched all three movies. Did not he's, know there was such a thing as a Willy Wonka phase. He has watched all three movies. He is he has a entire Wonka costume with hat, cane, and the whole the jacket, the whole nine yards. So, because Tommy is a big Willy Wonka fan, Spencer was like, "I want to wear my costume." And Michelle, my wife, said, "No, you can't go to the concert in your Willy Wonka costume." And I looked at my wife and I said, "Oh, yes, he can." Because Tommy will love it, I promise. So he went down in his costume. Um, Tommy loved it. Um, however, what I didn't know was there was a costume contest that night in, in, during the show. He didn't oh, say anything about that's that. That's interesting. So it was a total surprise. So there were like five other people dressed up. Somebody like 
Princess Daisy. There was a Luigi. There was a Tails. There was a guy in a Halo Halloween costume. And then there was Spencer. And they they did it by cheers. And the two that got the most cheers for their costume were the girl that dressed up as Tails. She had a decent costume. And Spencer as Willy Wonka. And Spencer won, which put aside the concert for a minute as a dad to hear. And I know part of it's because he's a kid and he's cute, but he had the whole costume. Like it wasn't like a Halloween costume. He had the outfit down to vest and scarf and the hat and the, the pants and the jacket. Like he was, he had the whole thing um, um, to hear 2000 people cheer for your child was incredible. And these guys behind me who had been like screaming out of their lungs the whole night, like every song that came up did that for, for him. Even the guy on stage with the halo costume was like putting his arms up when they cheered for Spencer. So like, and, and it was really cool. Cause I got to meet um, master system Marceau this weekend too. Yeah. I saw great he was guy. There. Had a, I had a chance to actually meet him face to face. Kind of surprised he's taller than me. I kind of pictured him as a shorter guy, but he's not. He's like 6'2". Um, and he went in with me to – he had he had bought the VIP experience. Um, so he came in early with us, got to meet Tommy as well. And um, he got – he had bought – the tickets he got were front row. Like he was like front row. So when Spencer won – and he got his little bag of goodies and he was standing over um, with Tommy kind of in the corner. He was in like his perfect position and Marceau got this perfect shot of him. So shout out to Marceau for that. Um, so great concert. Um, as we always do, hung out with Tommy, you know, during the show and but after the show. And we went to before he flew out on Sunday, we all I got to meet some of his family who lives in the area. And we went to the Greensboro Science Center on Sunday, the whole bunch of us. And it was really cool. Um, I didn't, again, Greensboro, North Carolina is not exactly a tourist mecca, but it had this really nice science center and aquarium and zoo. Um, so we hung out there until Tommy had to go get his flight. Um, he gave, it was, it was kind of nice too, because you know he really, he really likes my kids. He gave Seth his set list that he signed. So like his set, his like complete set list, which was cool. He gave Spencer the pick that he played, his like used pick he played Halo with, um, at, which is always their last number. And he gave that to Spencer. And like Spencer is nice. like, okay, dad, I want to play guitar now. So <laughs> he's, so, you know. My, my my kids are all happy. My uh, yeah, Greensboro, North Carolina. We were we were there over the weekend, um, and so it was just it was just a really great great weekend. And then you know, um, I would put meeting Marceau up there with uh, with everything else because he's really a cool guy, and him and I have done a lot of talking over the last year and a half, and. Um, um, I'm not going to go into any of that, but you know, he, um, and he got to, we got to hang out and it was, it was very nice. So okay. all Oak in City's all, in Riley. So you were too far from him, dude. I drove, I drove through Raleigh to get there. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, uh, that's cool. Um, it, it's no, 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 it's, it's not it's, like Raleigh and, and Durham and kind of that Winston Salem area is what everybody says is where everything is. Greensboro is not what I expected to be kind of this this thing. But but and again, their orchestra was amazing. Like I kept keying in on their harp player, and there was a, a the, the woman on the side, and I mean she's playing a full size harp, and hey, she back. was crazy amazing. Um. The, the and I would cellos, argue Charlotte, North Carolina the, is not chill. Not when I was there. That traffic around no. 3, 34 o'clock was basically California gridlock. It was bad. Really? 
Uh, it's been probably 10 years since we were down there. Nicole went down there to interview for a job and I went with her and it was crazy busy, um, in the, in the evening and in the mornings. The place another, I had the most. It's another big tech center. It's kind of like, you know, All right. not, it's not I, quite you, okay. Silicon Valley, Charlotte. but it's kind of like between like, you know, Denver, Colorado, it's like Denver, Colorado and Charlotte, North Carolina are like growing tech centers, right? For industry because it's cheaper to work there than it is to work in California these days. I got you. That and I guess because Charlotte's a little bit more of a of a you're right, it's more of a city. I'm not again, please do not misunderstand me. I am not putting down Greensboro. I just wasn't expect I was more expecting it to be kind of like a small city, you know, like a like a smaller town. Like you're coming to Maryland, going to Bel Air, Maryland, right? Up near me. It's not exactly Baltimore, you know, or going to White Marsh. It's just it's not exactly the big city, but I was really impressed. I was impressed. Greensboro is pretty uh, well known in the South though. I, I think it's more because you're from the North and you're from the Northeast and you just don't hear much about areas from the South unless it's like yeah. Nashville or Orlando. You've or a big, or a big city, or right. Like, or, you know, like uh, Louisville, Kentucky or whatnot for the Kentucky Well, I mean, Bears. I've heard of Raleigh. You I know. know Raleigh. I know Charlotte. I know those towns. Myrtle Beach, right? I know those. <laughs> I know it. Mike Mullis hates Greenville so much. <laughs> you think you know somebody, and then one day you find out they're a Greenboro <laughs> folk. Good to see you, Cy. <laughs> Good to see you, Cyrus. No, and but see, it was Cy's a, saying I mean, that, and he's really from Texas. Was. They don't claim any of the South. You know, you know no, you're don't. in bad, bad shape if a Texan's calling you out on your nonsense. I know. So, all in all, um, a fantastic weekend. We went down Saturday. Um, came back up Sunday, um, and just really, really an all around great weekend. And, and, you know, shout out to my kids, man. That's a, not an easy drive. We spent literally 12 hours total in the car and, you know, they were, they were awesome. Both, both legs of the trip. Um, and Spencer was up. I mean, we didn't get back to our hotel until, you know, 1130, 1130 and that's way past his bedtime and he they were they were best behavior so <laughs> i've been to dallas after debbie did it <laughs> after debbie did it so now on on and of you know um just just a great great weekend and it's always great to catch up with um you know with my friends that yeah. was my weekend. How was yours? Uh, mine was not bad. Friday we grilled out. Uh, I want to say for a cost of about like twenty five dollars, we got a pound and a half of ground uh, ground sirloin, six hot dogs, Ooh. and two brats, and we grilled out for the first time this year because the weather was finally nice enough and conducive enough to be able to do that. Um, so that came out really good. And Saturday I didn't do too much. Uh, my back we got kind of messed up on. It, I didn't feel anything on Thursday, but Friday it started bothering me. Matter of fact, I took today off because it was still bugging me last night and I had trouble sleeping. So it's finally recovered. I I strained something in my mid back and it just would not work itself out. It kept moving and migrating the more we more I worked on it, liniment, Epsom salts, etc. Oh. So I was originally going to stream on Saturday and Sunday, but I skipped Saturday, but I did stream on Sunday. So I finished getting through Contra uh, Galuga, and yes, that's how that's pronounced. That's how they pronounce it in the game. I saw, I, to it. Um, yeah, I, I went back and started watching that stream because I wanted to see. I wanted to see you uh, get through it. Yeah, I finished. I finished the story mode, and then I went through it again on arcade mode. So it took me. I didn't quite get the achievement for it. There's an achievement for finishing it in just under 60 minutes, and it took me in 63 minutes to finish it. So I need to cut some time if I want to get that particular achievement. But right now I'm kind of comfortable with where I'm at on that game. I'd probably do Dark Forces on Wednesday and try to wrap that up if I can. Um, try to get through most of that. Um, but that was a good game. I was I was glad I bought it. And then we went to see Frozen Empire Sunday night. That was How was that? Uh, we yeah. enjoyed it. I, I feel like Good. they added a few too many characters, but it didn't suffer from some of the things that other people were complaining about. A lot of people were complaining that there were too many side things. Um, 
and there weren't a lot of really good resolutions to those, but I thought most of the ends were pretty well tied up overall. They did have a few too many characters because now they have like as much of the old cast that they can bring in. And then they have the new cast of Ghostbusters. And then you have like all these extra people coming in and giving bits and pieces of information and all this other stuff. And so it's a really big cast. And so managing it, even in a two, two and a half hour film is very tricky. I'm hoping at some point they kind of condense that down a little. Not that I want to see people not have work, but I feel like it's adding too much character bloat a little bit to an, what's otherwise a fairly streamlined film. Um, but I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a good sequel to Afterlife. So good. I uh, want to see that. So I, I in definitely my mind, want to there's see it. Four out of the five movies I've enjoyed, right? The only one that I can't find joy in is the one from 2016. And I have tried. Nobody can. Nobody uh, can. Anybody wants to give me crap on that one? I gave that movie four tries. Four. Nope. And no, I don't no, like no it. No crap. No crap here. So, my wife couldn't even get my wife couldn't even get fifteen minutes into that before she said, "What's up, you can Finish this if you want. I'm I'm going to bed." <laughs> the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn the patriarchy. I really I really wanted to like that movie because I I've, I've liked all the Ghostbuster stuff. I liked the cartoon. I loved the toys as a kid. I loved, I liked, I even liked the second movie, which a lot of people don't like. I liked the first two movies. I liked Afterlife. I liked Frozen Empire. I'm, I'm a bona fide Ghostbusters fan. I like most of the things that they I, do. Uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to like, like it. that film. Um, and, and I, that I'm, sucked for me because I really wanted to enjoy it, but I knew I was going to be skittish about that one when it when I heard the cast when I heard who was directing it I'm like none of this sounds good because I don't none of the women that were and, in there I thought were very funny from my standpoint I've seen most of them and other things and didn't enjoy them Melissa I can't stand McCarthy Paul as a director I, hate I can't him. either I think he's trash and he didn't impress me on this one um, so it, it wasn't a win so but uh, yeah Frozen Empire is good. I liked Frozen Empire. Good. That's that's all I care about. That's all I care about. So <laughs> the director that goes sponsors listening. Greensboro. <laughs> Mike immediately <laughs> hates it. <laughs> Down with Greensboro. Down Mike, with Greensboro. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for me. I'll abolish Greensboro. That's right. Come that's on, right. guys. I am seriously, seriously, stop. I am not downing Greensboro. I was very, I was very surprised with it. Yeah. And galaxy, I would have been too. And I, I thought they were going to do some sort of passing at the torch and they really didn't. Well, uh, that was more. That's, afterlife. And that's what and I'm looking at. I thought that started what, doing a really good job on that. The, that's what I'm ho- Okay. And, and don't, I don't, again, don't spoil anything for me. Cause I, I, I think this weekend I'm going to take the kids to see after, uh, to see frozen empire. But, my issue with Afterlife that I felt was that they they waited <laughs> they blocked, way they too the long. That you could slap Ghostbusters on a turd and it would be good. Theory was busted. Yeah, <laughs> big block. Still, Greensboro will take a deuce there. <laughs> wow. Okay. <sighs> well, this is this this. This this show has gone down the go. Greensboro. They are not going to no, let this go. No, they're not. So this you show guys has gone down the Greensboro. The topic for tonight is going to be peripherals, and I've kind of expanded that a little bit because there's like a console or two, or and I and I put the VMU on the thumbnail, and I put the virtual the uh, Virtual Boy on the thumbnail, and the reason is because I think there's an argument to be had for that kind of technology to kind of come back in a different way from both of those respect or one in general and the other one from that respective company in a better way than the Labo. So we may go that direction with this a little bit as well, but I kind of want to add in other peripherals. Power Glove is up for, up for debate. Rob is up for debate. Stuff like the Zapper, the Minister, and all that stuff is up for debate. Um, and because I know Mike is here, I put the connect on the thumbnail. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I know you guys. You could try to make that argument. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
Yeah, I heard the Fallout showrunner said he doesn't care about the fans. Then I don't know why he made the I don't know why he made the show. Because the people who are fans of the series, the the game series, are going to be the first people to watch that and get other people to Modern try it. Audiences. And if you don't start Modern selling audiences. it to them, you're not going to have an audience. Modern audiences. Uh, talk about Fortnite and the upcoming Rock Band Guitar Hero thing. What? I do. I so I, I mean, would Guitar not Hero mind in the, if in we... the plastic guitar controllers and. Um, and Macarena and Macros that, and all that stuff. Yeah, that's that's arguable to come back as well. You 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 shut your blasphemous mouth, Galaxy. What? Next what? was not horrible. <laughs> you beep, shut beep, your blasphemous mouth. Beep beep. Beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do actually. <laughs> So, so we may we may want to talk about the we may want to talk about the um, the guitars too because that that does actually there there is that is about to make a huge resurgence. Um, so yeah, and honestly, the I think the the pads and stuff like that for like the Dance Dance Revolution and stuff like that, making a good third party one of those that's more durable, not just a plastic pad, but maybe like a a stand thing that you can actually kind of stand on or something like that. Uh, I think would be great because there's a big market for like dance, dance revolution cabinets and peripherals and things like that. Mm -hmm. They even made one you can play with your fingers, which is truly bizarre. It's an oddity. I never covered it because I wasn't sure how to make a long enough video on it. Cause it's basically a dance, dance revolution pad that you play like you're dancing with your fingers. That that's how you play it. It's just really weird. I don't know yes. why you wouldn't use a normal controller, but you know, if you want one that fits in the palm of your hand, then there you go. It's an option. You sold one of those for 180? No. Holy crap. Well, the new ones are going to be the new ones are going to be like 200 bucks. What? The, the new All guitars? Right, so like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because, okay, so let me, let me, I'll tell you why. So, so, I don't know if you know, but Epic bought Harmonix. I think it was Harmonix. Okay. I think, they, I think it's Harmonix they bought. I think, yeah, I um, think they're the original progenitors of the Guitar Hero series. Now, they're not the first they, to make that kind of tech, but they definitely made, I think they're the ones that came up with the Guitar Hero concept. Get, um, well, they came up with Rock Band. Oh, um, rock band was in. I knew Hero, there were two no, no, variants, but, but, and I can't remember who did which. There are. Guitar Hero. Well, so okay. So there, guitar technically Hero there's three. Was, there's Guitar Smith. Yeah, so which so, would teach you how to play an actual guitar. Right. And that was kind of its own thing. Then you had Guitar Hero and then right. you had Rock Band. And those were the so, three major players. Yeah, so technically technically Harmonix did make Guitar Hero, but but Red Octane was the original publisher. Um, and then the rock band, rock band sort of came from, um, from harmonics themselves. So it, it, they, they, they sort of split off once and, and went to rock band. So the, theoretically harmonics made both, um, what they're doing now Fortnite added what Oak City is and and Back from the Dead was talking about uh, jam tracks. Basically, they're taking Rock Band and they're putting it in Fortnite as a as a game mode. And for the moment, there are a number of songs you can use and you use the controller to to do the things. <laughs> what they're working Oak on. He's kind of trash tonight. <laughs> oh, gee. Not tonight, not tonight, Oak. We we need to get you when you're not. Seriously, we need to get <laughs> you on when you're not. Um, but yeah, I knew they integrated Lego. Like they made like a Lego survival yep. game that's now inside the game. And Fortnite seems to be becoming the every genre game. Like eventually, well, they, it's just gonna have like everything in there in like one well, Fortnite they, skin. They they've brought in racing. And they're br and they've brought in pieces of um, Rocket League because Epic also well not not 
anymore. Epic had a thing with with Rocket League, but then Sony bought um Sony bought that company. Who bought Rocket League? Hang on. Let me make sure I'm right on that. I know ever, there's been Rocket so League. many there's been so many people um, I know um epic so used many, to own it because i got it for like free on epic, the epic used store. to own it so they used to own it. hang on let me see who owns who owns them now yeah a couple of you i said that that there's a lego racing game i don't want to make this episode all about fortnite um well no the reason the reason that um the reason that i brought it up is because they are bringing into the um the jam part they are they are getting ready to integrate the rock band not only the not only the the guitars and things like that the word is that people's rock band dlc will work in the game so that's like a kind of a pretty huge thing that they're i mean that's that nice because that, there was a lot there was a absolute crap ton of content that was added for that stuff after yes. the fact. Um, and everybody just kind of lost that when those games kind of went down. As far as I can tell, because I mean, there was hundreds and hundreds of extra tracks that popped in there because it became an easy way to make an extra two or three dollars. So you just oh, yeah. translate a track and you throw it in there and there you go. Our first night off so of that's, weeks of making new content for multiple places and pulling my money. Nice, man. Yeah, uh, so that, I that's, actually that, like a lot of the Lego games. They started to kind of taper off and be kind of frustrating. Uh, I thought, I think the uh, Skywalker saga is not too bad on PS5, but I found there was like too much stuff to collect and it kind of got a little overwhelming and I just put it down and didn't want to play it anymore. Um, but the, the mechanics are there. If you like the normal sound of collecting studs and all that stuff. There's plenty of it to do there. Um, Lego city undercover was probably my, one of my absolute favorites, particularly on the Wii U it was brilliant on that. Yeah. The Lego city Avengers. Yeah. That's uh the Lego city undercover. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. If they could use AI to make any track rock band song in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could translate absolutely. it through like AI or something like that and do it that way. Um, so there's, there's probably, that would be, that would be great if people have that content and have a way of migrating that over somehow. I don't know how they're going to do that. Well, they, like I said, they own well, it all yeah, now. Galaxy, so. They're all collectathons. Absolutely. And I used to, I used to, I used to have a lot of, um, guitar hero and rock band stuff. I never got into it, but then I never really got, I never got into Guitar Hero at all. Um, I found the, I found this, the controller felt weird to me because I never actually played guitar. So the way the, the way the controller worked to try to mimic a, mimic a guitar, I found kind of a, a little obnoxious. Plus they ate up a lot of space. Scepter puts it right there. Like a lot of those things, they just took up so much room too. And I think that was part yes. of people's problem with them was... Yeah, especially Rock Band. If you got the full kit for Rock Band, you had a drum set sitting around, you had a microphone, you had the guitar, and then you got to plug all this stuff and have room with a lot of people to be able to mess with those things. As much as I'd like to see those things make a comeback, I think I'd like to see something simpler make a comeback. Um, I'd really like to see light gun games make a go on modern TVs. And I know that, that we've talked about light guns before, and how they don't necessarily work in a modern environment, but I think they're, I think they mostly saw that to where it's more like a cursor moving along. But honestly, I played plenty of those in the arcade. They work the same way in the arcade, and they don't feel bad. They feel just fine. Instead of it just aim wherever you aim and it being there, I mean, it just kind of moves the reticle along at the speed of which you're aiming. So it's kind of like using a quick trackball or mouse to be able to aim. And I think those work. Um, honestly, I think Rob the Robot is kind of due for kind of a little bit of a comeback. I think you could make that mechanism work better. Um, and I think that could do be what? fun if you did it right. I don't know if you'd want to do it on this version of the Switch, but I think you could certainly do something with that concept. I know why they made that concept and they weren't too worried about it being successful because of what they wanted it to do. Because it did exactly what they wanted it to do. 
So, um, okay, so what did it do? Because I, I remember I wasn't a Nintendo kid, so okay. I don't have well, any idea what, what did, Rob the Robot what it did, did. Technically, is it helped play? It played games with you, right? So it had two games. It had Gyromite and Stack Up. Gyromite, you would put the controller in its hand, and it would have like a little spinning thing that it would pick up, and it would put it on one of the buttons to help you navigate the stage because it was technically a two-player game. One person would control like, like the pistons and stuff that would elevate, that would move you, leave, like access to areas, or allow you lift you up into other areas and things like that. So you could either play two-player or you could have it by spinning those things like a top and putting it on there, press the button down to do the same thing, right? And then uh, okay. stack up, you had these different colored um, discs that would sit on pedestals. And so what you would do is you had three different bays and the idea was to basically maneuver them in such a way that you would match their organization on the screen. So you would move your guy around and Rob would pick them up and move them into different piles until you had them sorted the appropriate way. So those were the, those were the two games that were really designed for it. But what it was really more or less designed for was to get people over the fact that it was a console and look at it more as like a toy. It was really a way of them right. selling the console more as a toy for kids and having a cool looking okay. robot, right? And making it the the neat toy to have and overcoming that stigma of a console, which wasn't really well respected in the United States market at the time. Rob was kind of a Trojan horse for getting Nintendo in people's homes. That's really what it was designed to do more than be a good game. Okay. Well, what's up, Red Bash? And for what they wanted, really wanted it to do, which is be a Trojan horse for getting the NES into people's houses, it worked brilliantly because people started getting in it and picking up like the various different ones because you'd see the robot and the robot's there and it looks all futuristic and cool and the console looks all kind of sleek and cool and stuff. And there you go, you know it looks good on the display and some people got it and some people didn't because that kit was like $250, $300. Um, they had a couple of different variations. Some came with a zapper and two or two controllers. Some came with Rob and the two controllers and some came with like the power pad thing, the action set. And that came with the, the power pad and like track and field. Um, so there was a lot of stuff with that. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was good. No. Oh. And, and and Oak City... Um, yes, I have many Trojan horses. By the way, welcome, Zonic. <laughs> Oak City, bro- Oak City uh, brought up the, the thing that, you know, I would love to see. And I know we've had sort of this discussion before. And I know um, there's been a couple of people. And I think Oak was one of them that had, had a... Uh, the, you know, there are ways to do it. But someone needs to natively come up with a light gun. And I don't mean... One that's got a uh, a crazy setup that works with certain things. I wish somebody would come up with a a usable light gun system. Well, if they the kind of have Wii, done that. I mean, Hope right, City has a setup. I know, but it's it's like a workaround kind of thing. Where, where, well, it, where it works about it, as it well doesn't... as like the one for the Wii. I mean, the Wii was the closest thing you had to an actual yes. light gun because you can yes. put the Wiimote into like a chassis or just point it at the screen and function it right. like a light gun. And it, right. Cause it had a bar. It had the light bar. Right. Right. But that basically just did tracking kind of like what these are doing. These are acting a little bit more like a, let's call it a differently shaded, like a um, mass cursor in a way. Right. But it, it requires, to my knowledge, it's only PC, Right. Uh, only works with PC. I think it might, I think you might be able to work on, on other things, but I think primarily it may be PC and emulation and the switch kind of did it with Mario galaxy. You're right. Cause it has limited motion controls, but it doesn't work as well as like the, the Wii and the Wii U did with it because the Wii U basically would allow you to use the sensor bar from the Wii and use the Wii modes with it. Right. So that's how I got around that problem. The Switch ditches all that because that's all kit that they don't want on something that's meant to just pick up and go and plug in and play on your TV. So it doesn't really fit with their methodology. But yeah, in a limited in limited way, you can. 
Yeah, yes. and there is. And there's a couple of different setups. There's a uh, Lynx crossbow right, training, there's... which is amazing. Uh, and it has its own little gun attachment. As a matter of fact, they sold little pistol attachments that you could put the Wiimote into. And those functioned really well. I've got some of those floating around my house. Um, all those are quite great. And they work really well for what they are. It just, the Wii didn't become quite the light gun console. I think everybody really wanted it to be. Or it just didn't take off because I guess people just were kind of out of it and just didn't want it. Maybe it's just us older people that kind of want that technology to come back because we're used to it and we kind of miss it. Yeah. The power glove kind of, yeah. Well, the thing with the power glove is you took a $10,000 piece of kit and you made it to a price point of $100. So it was obviously not going to work well. And that's another one that I think could play well with another idea that I kind of want to talk about eventually, which is like the virtual boy coming back in a sense. And Oak city says, yeah, it's PC only. Yeah. See, that's, uh, and w I want somebody to, I want somebody to come back with a gun that works. Yeah. Obviously you need games that work with it, but I would like to see somebody come up with a, with a light gun that, it works on say modern consoles with, you know, games or, or come up or even come up with a retro gun that, that can, that can work with the old stuff. Like, you know, my, my house of the dead too, for the, for the dreamcast, yeah. right. Stuff like that. The, the closest thing you work get with the to Saturn. a real like gun experience right now, I feel like, unless you get that expensive PC setup, is, um, VR because there's like space yes. pirate trainer and that does a really good yep. job of giving you kind of a, a focused light gun experience, but it doesn't move you through a stage or anything like that. I haven't seen one that really emulates that kind of feel. And that would be a cool place to kind of take it as into VR. Right. So you, I agree. Have, you have the controllers, like you can even do this on like a very near the switch. You could disconnect the joy cons and you have like a, a virtual VR heads up, heads up display kind of thing that attaches to it. And then you move those kind of up and down around as it moves you through the stage. And then you can kind of do it that way. You could probably do that on the normal TV too, if you wanted to, where you can just kind of motion those around a little bit and maybe it'll work. That might work in a sense. There have been a couple of things like that chicken shoot that Oak city mentioned, but I heard really bad things about that game. Like it just didn't function as people wanted it to. And it definitely didn't work as well as the Wii. But it would be, be nice to see somebody do something like that. And I feel if anybody's going to do that, it's probably going to be Nintendo. I don't feel like Xbox or Sony has any interest in going into that, especially with Sony no. only basically killing support off on their VR2 headset. Um, they just don't have much well, interest and, in those kinds of things right now. Well, and, and the thing is that nobody, I think also nobody wants to do like on games period uh you see them in the arcade of course but you, you're not seeing them in home consoles um you know you're not seeing the latest you know, sega's not making virtual cop anymore uh namco's not making a uh, uh, time crisis but what's um, funny is i'm seeing things like the alien games and term new terminator games pop up in arcades uh there's a local yep. arcade here and it had i had new ones of both of those and they play good yeah, Even the controllers aren't slightly I, broken. Yeah, I mean, you go into you go into a Dave and Buster's, and I would say a good thirty percent of their games are all gun games, and and like Tomb Raider's got a gun gun game. You know, you're, you as you said, Terminator, um, mm -hmm. Jurassic Park is is a big one. It's always Halo. The Jurassic Halo has Park a gun sit game. down cabinet is amazing. That game's crazy. odd thing is. That is wild. I love that one. That's a great game. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of those that are in the arcade. Somebody's got to bring one home. And, and again, if if they don't want to do it for modern consoles, like Scepter is saying, there's not enough games. Somebody's got to put one out that works on that that that's compatible with retro consoles. Because to be honest, I would love to play my Virtual Cop again. I would love to play my House of the Dead again. I would love to play Lethal Enforcers again. But I can't unless I go and I dig out a, a CRT television. Somebody's got to yeah. make something that is 
that backward compatible with the retro scene so that we can we can get back to playing those games. Yes, I need a modern gun that works on not not necessarily so not that just works on retro consoles that works on modern televisions. I think you'd That's like to really see it work on a modern TV because to. the original concept of the light gun was ha- worked in how the CRT functioned, right? And exactly how it, how it rasterized the screen when you pulled the trigger to be able to detect whether you hit a target or not. Um, one of the reasons light gun games went away is as we moved away from CRT TVs to LCD and LED TVs and now OLED TVs and all this other stuff is there's a bigger delay in how things are drawn because of the way the light diodes work and the way things are drawn on the screen. So that old technology doesn't work, but I don't think there was enough interest in the game type for people to try to find a really efficient way outside of this PC option that Oak City's mentioned to try to get around that. And the PC one mostly works for a lot of the, like if you were doing emulation, you could probably use it, right? So if you wanted, you could set up like a light gun cabinet with retro arch and some of those games attached to it and do it that way. And I've thought about doing it at some point if I can ever get myself set down enough to build the original cabinet that I've got the base for and get that one set up to do one to try to get it to work through like light guns. Well, and, and, you know, I, I remember, like, you're right. Man, Mega Creek was on the Wii, and I didn't even realize it was on the Wii until I saw it like ages after. Yep. I might have seen it in the store, but the Wii was a weird console because there was so much junk content that hit that console. It had the same problem that most really popular consoles hit, like PlayStation Two had the same problem, where you just see gobs and gobs of trash out there, like filling up space between all the really good stuff. There was a ton of really good stuff, both on the Wii and on the PlayStation 2. Don't get me wrong. But there was a lot of just low-end crap that just got thrown out there. And so unless your cover really stood out really, really well, it got mistaken for, like, just garbage. <laughs> and overlooked. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you know, the only one, the only other one that I am aware of that is still working on it and still claims that they have it that it's coming out is Polymega. Now Polymega's had problems just getting their damn system the out the door. Polymega's a little too expensive of a solution, I feel like. That that's Well, that's it yes. Especially I for agree. emulation. When 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 we thought it was going to be an FPGA but, solution or something I know. like that that was a and little that's bit why better. I've, but when you're doing that's like a straight I've up emulator, uh, that that's a little more sketchy to me. Well, that's why I've held off on it, but I will say that. Yeah, I could see that too, Cy. That makes total sense to me. If they, if they actually brought the gun out, which they claim they're the claim, it's the claim is still. I'm looking at their site, quarter two, 2024. Um, it would be the only thing to drive me in that direction because right now I emulate. Sega CD, Sega Genesis, uh, PlayStation, and um, Super Nintendo. Because I don't have real hardware for that. Now, Saturn, Dreamcast, and up, I I have real hardware. What's up, Eugene? I didn't see you pop in. I'm what a little is- way behind on Jet, actually. What's up, Scrambles? I could be. Hey, guys. Scrambles. My man uh, right there. Honestly, scrambles. I'm leaving it kind of vague because one of the things, because um, Zombie mentioned the uh, the power glove, which is absolutely a peripheral. But I'd argue absolutely you could is. do something with the Virtual Boy to kind of bring that back and make it work with something akin to the power glove and make kind of a cool like VR system out of that, right? Where you're using the gloves with like the VR headset that you have attached and make that kind of its own unit and really kind of work into the VR space. And it seems like something that Nintendo has already tried to dive into enough that if they really wanted to put the time into it, they could do something just like that. They could be really cool. Um, so I think those two things would be good candidates to try to bring back, depending on the next direction that Nintendo wants to go. Now I suspect yes. they're going to do a yes. switch too. And that seems to be the current rumor. They're going to do a more powerful version of the switch. 
But Nintendo's also known for going completely left field with an idea randomly. Like everybody's like, cool, we're all going right. Nintendo goes, well, screw you guys. I'm going over here. We're going left. <laughs> it just goes off into the wilderness somewhere. <laughs> And occasionally they strike gold, and occasionally it's so, not so much. Well, and honestly, the Game Boy Advance, I would say the link cable to make it work with that. And that, that brings up an, another one that I want to talk to, and we'll get to that too. And that's sort of like the VMU concept, um, and that can work into that kind of concept as well. So we might join those into a similar idea. But let's let Mike kind of get his thoughts out here, too, because you guys have got a lot of ideas. And you guys are all going the same direction I go, which is Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Because they kind of go with the most weird stuff. And that's kind of like where I like to go with these rather than the mainstream. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they really do. They I'll tell you, Nintendo is the king of bizarre things. There are some things that other, you know, being the Sega guy, there was always the activator. <laughs> um yes yes was, zombie mentioned activator you know, and the activator yeah, kind of plays a, into that similar that similar vein and i don't know if we really need the activator but i think something i i think that kind of can get covered by having um trying to I, there are v- basically VR like light can cover sensor that. boxes that can track things on some of the VR headsets. Yes. So, the so Valve VR Index can do or that. Now, if you could map that thing, to where it can do like more body mapping, the, you could do the, something like where, the activator without needing that ring and the same the same limitations uh, as the activator. You you also could have, and this is where this is where it, Microsoft really just dropped the ball. Um, this is where connect could have had a lot more, um, you know, if it had some more development time in the oven for developers could have done a lot more. And they tried to do that with the first act with the first connect. And there was a fighting game for connect, I believe on the 360 as they moved to the connect on the Xbox one. And it was able to pick up finger movements and things like that. There was, there there was potential to allow a camera to do that. And and if you look at VR now, VR can do that because um, of... I don't think Nintendo ever made one, Eugene, but there were several of those. The Dreamcast had one, and there was like a third-party one that worked on, I want to say the PlayStation 2, maybe the PlayStation 1. But there were fishing controllers. Those Those do exist. I don't think Nintendo had one, though, that I'm aware of. I mean, they had a sonar. <laughs> that was another so, all right. weird, bizarre thing that existed. So, Scepter says, are memory cards peripherals? I would argue the VMU is, because you didn't need it to be able to play the VMU. Case. You use a regular one, but the VMU added additional stuff. Yes, the VMU did. A regular memory card, I'm not sure as a peripheral. I would say it's an accessory. Yeah. I would say if you start talking um, ones like the VMU or the Sony Pocket Station, yes. Then you start getting into peripherals because yeah. they do something else other than. Yes. So, you know, the, v- yes. the VMU certainly was not just a memory card. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the Labo stuff. <laughs> But the Labo thing, I think, actually did make a fishing rod out of the Switch somehow. Uh, I think it used a Joy-Con and, like, the cardboard in order to make it. Labo's a weird experiment by Nintendo that came and blissfully went away. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with that move (laughs) at all. I didn't buy any of them. Um, It was very creative. I just wish they had done something a little more... Durable now, <laughs> if you want, right? So, if you want to talk about stuff that so, I so, want to be sedated with a Game Boy, <laughs> <laughs> As Scrambles brings up the pet sedate line from uh, yeah. from James Rolfe. <laughs> so, Galaxy says, if you want to get technical, the 32X and Sega C were peripheral since they were attached to the Genesis to run. I think he's half joking. But no, they're not peripherals. They're add-ons. 
those are those are because they run separate games. So it's not like Rob the Robot where it ran a Nintendo game and did something within the Nintendo game. Those yeah, because technically you just, can play the game without you could well, okay, stack up I, you really need to rob the play. Jeremiah, you could play with somebody else. You just hand them the controller, right? And and it would right. work fine. Theoret so technically this like the those are accessories. Right, the they're not peripherals; they're accessories. When I I know you were half yeah, thirty two X and Sega CD. What, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I I, I consider those, I would consider them accessories. Yeah, accessories, accessories. not necessarily because they not necessary peripherals. And I know I kind of broke that rule a little bit with the Virtual Boy. Um, and honestly, having attachments that extend the life or capability of your device, like okay, here's another one that could kind of go either way. The Circle Pad Pro for the 3DS. It added an extension onto your 3DS that gave you a second Circle Pad, which was supported by very few games, but some games. Now, I would consider technically that a you don't need that. Technically, it, it expands your console, but it's also a peripheral because you don't need it to play anything. Right. I, I would consider it a peripheral. It's kind of a there, weird gray would, area, right? So where are you... You know, you can kind of argue both ways. Kind of like the uh, yeah, kind of like on the, the personal on the clean... link as a peripheral itself. <laughs> you look at the link cable between, like, say your GBA and your GameCube or your Game Boy to Game Boy, because Pokemon I don't think would have been as big of a success if the link cable didn't exist for the Game Boy. I... See, I think that. I think the Game Boy, the Game Boy Link cable, the cable itself is just a cable. It turns the it turns the GBA into a peripheral. Uh, on the GBA, yeah, because it connects to the GameCube. But the Game Boy to Game right. Boy allowed you to do head to head, or trade, or do other things that you wouldn't be able to do in handheld otherwise. Because the Game Gear couldn't do it, Links couldn't do it, Nomad couldn't do it. None of those could do the same functionality the Game Boy had because the Game Boy had a way of connecting both of them together. Yeah. So I would consider the, I would consider the game link cable an accessory. Ah, JDA deletes here. Cool. Hey, JDA. Um, and, and scepters where I'm at, you think of a peripheral, you think of a controller. (laughs) Big box says, I don't, I don't want it, but Nick's video made me aware of something a lot of us probably need a glucose monitor. (laughs) Glucose monitor. peripheral. Oh, and that's um, a bizarre, weird thing that people made. That's practical. And other people sigh. mentioned the sewing machine attachment for the Game Boy. You make patterns on your Game Boy. You hook it up to your sewing machine and your sewing machine sews the pattern. That was an actual thing. That's weird. But it exists. That is weird. So I would. So I'll uh, so give you a. So for. All the things that you could connect to the uh, ColecoVision, for example, right? The um, uh, the Pro Controller and the wheel are peripherals. The yeah. um, expansion, the expansion slot, the expansion uh, thing for the Atari games is an accessory. That's kind of how I feel the difference between a peripheral and an accessory is. Um, and I love how our chat's got us back to defining the thing. That I was kind of intentionally Which is fine. vague. Now we're going to waste 40 yeah. minutes defining it. We'll go to Retro Roots. <laughs> so, well, you know, we we are here for our we are here for our for our wonderful viewers. <laughs> um so I mean the the activator, the guns, the the power glove, um, you know, I think of what else now super is out scope. there that we fit board. right the super scope. Ah, the we fit board. We fit That's board. a peripheral. Yep. That is definitely a peripheral because you 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 don't necessarily, yeah. So, and yes, I consider we're connect talking about a various peripheral. different peripherals and consoles and ones we might want to see come back. Um, we've already kind yes. of discussed the power glove. I've kind of talked a little I, so, bit about the virtual wave, which is a console, not a peripheral, but how you could bring it back in say, the yes, sense of a peripheral okay. and kind of make it into something new or work it with other peripherals they've done in the past, 
like the power glove and stuff like that and make kind of a new, more unique experience. So here's a here's an interesting here here here's an interesting kind of uh, wrench that you can throw into this whole thing. PSVR is a peripheral. MetaQuest is a system. Yes. <laughs> Technically, the Virtual Boy is a system as well. Yes, the Virtual Boy is a system. The PSVR is but technically the, a peripheral, but it also counts it's a as, a various, as an augmentation, but I would probably count that more as a peripheral. It does allow you access to other games you wouldn't be able to play in the console. But Correct. Most of the peripherals did that. The Nintendo Zapper, which while it's peripheral, allowed you to play things like Hogan's Alley. I think it worked with like Punisher oh. during its light gun sequences. I think it worked during with uh, Platoon during its its side scrolling sequences. Tur- I think even by you Billy Turbo. had some sequences it would work with. Yep. There were some Turbo Pit Stop. A couple of other uh, games required the Coleco wheel, or they yeah. or you couldn't play them. Yeah, but like things. But like I would the still wheels, consider that a peripheral. Wheel controllers that they don't really make anymore. Uh, flight sticks, which are pretty rare to find these days, are another one that would be a good one to have come back if those genres got got big again. But honestly, steering wheel controllers, why more of those aren't really made? Um, is kind of weird because there's still a big market for racing games, and I'm surprised more oh, people you can, don't really want to invest in those. Because they're so freaking expensive now. Like, if you look at Sir X-Man and his his setups and I've looked up wheel setups for uh, Xbox and PlayStation. <laughs> the tagline, Retro roots. We get to the root of the conversation. Even if I have to go back over it over and over and, and over, over and, and over, over and, and over, over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you um, like could use it. You could put it into the second yep. controller slot and you could use it. There are a couple of games that were not advertised to work with the light gun that worked with the light gun. Like straight up. Well, and there were games. There were games. Um, so, and and this is not a very well known game, but on the Saturn there was a game called Scud, and I do have it. Um, it worked either with a controller. I or, think that was designed for the Konami Laser Scope, but you could use it with a Zapper too. Which one? Uh, Scud. Is that that was an NES game, right? I think. No, Saturn. Sega Saturn. Saturn. Okay, I was thinking of one. There was one for that came out with the Konami Laser Scope, but it would also work with the Zapper. Same technology. No, and so this, yeah, so this this worked. You could either play it strictly with the controller, or you could use a combination of controller and gun, and that's how the game operated. And you yeah. just chose which way you wanted to play. Now it is Scepter. Scud is a Scud is a hidden gem. Hang on, I'll go get it. But, and this was a Sega made game, by the way. So this, this is called Scud the Impossible Assassin. And the way you played it was, and it's, and it's two player if you wanted to, it was compatible with the stunner. So you could either play, and I know this is, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, if I'm the camera is fuzzy or not. I'm right now because I don't think it cut your feet off from the other. Oh, no, we Weird. should have. Um, no, it should be fine. I don't know if, they, are they hearing so, you right now? Guys, uh, I, I, I don't hopefully know. you guys can hold on. It just no, it just lit up. That's fine. It is okay. a weird ass game. It had a crazy, crazy weird soundtrack too. Um, the, the last track on the CD is bizarro, but fire away with any combination of gun and D pad for one or two players. So, no, I did not talk about Skylanders. I do. I actually really like Amiibos. I don't buy too many of them anymore. Uh, I like the Amiibo concept better than I do the Skylander concept. Because the Amiibos are reused from like game to game to game. Whereas Skylanders feels like you kind of bought them for that game. Kind of like a Disney Disney Infinite. Uh, kind of had the one game. And then those things kind of came and, and just went. The little statues are neat. They're cool looking. Um, that's not one I'm really eager to see come back in that way. Not necessarily. Lethal Enforcers for Sega Genesis. Mm-hmm. 
I have the I have the the Sega CD version of Lethal Enforcers. I still have the guns. I just can't use them. Yeah. So, well, like, yeah, because it, it would work. You'd have to get an old CRT TV for them to work. That'd be Scepter, like, the please only tell me way that, to get them to work. Yeah, please tell me with Scud that you've listened to the last CD track. I didn't even know game. Scud was a thing, but then I didn't get into the Saturn at all around that time because I kind of felt notoriously burned by Sega at that point. Um, and no. wasn't. But this really was a this was a crazy game console. But this was a, I mean, but and this is a Sega soft game. So I mean, it's a Sega game. But it, I, I brought it out just because again, it it used a combination of D pad and and gun. Yes. So switching over to amiibos and stuff. Spencer is still playing Disney Infinity with those. Really, with they those still things. Works? I've got it a bunch of those. I don't know if he's got them, but I'm not using them for anything. I'd be tempted to send them to you. I it it, I, it depends on what you got. I mean, um, uh, uh, we'll have to FaceTime the, he, or something. And, 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 and his mom, the ones I've got. yeah, his I had mom, a bunch of Marvel ones and and a my, bunch of Pixar my wife ones just got and him. stuff like that. And I I don't I've got a yeah. box of them. I don't even know what's in there anymore. My wife. My wife just got him the uh, the the Lone Ranger because he went through a Lone Ranger phase. So he's got the, the she found the Lone Ranger ones on on Amazon and got him that. He still plays Disney. We've got Disney Infinity two and three to this day. I didn't even know they had a three. I knew two came out. Yep. I found Infinity kind of frustrating because it was kind of a make your own game. But by the time I felt like I could add enough of the extra little things to do the features to make the game functional. It felt like I was running out of assets I could put on the stage. They probably improved that with like 2.0 and 3.0, but it was kind of a weird, it was a very bizarre setup to try to get th- certain things running. Some people got really, really good with it. Now, the Lego one, the Lego Dimensions that oh. Galaxy just mentioned. Now, my wife loved just the minifigs and stuff out of that. She had a blast with that. We had tons of those. And that, honestly, that kind of thing with the actual collecting, and they've tried to do that a little bit themselves. They had an entire um, phone game that would work with some of their kits, and you could do things with them, and I thought that was a really cool idea because that didn't and require some of you the actually thing... have a console disc or anything. You could do it with your mobile phone. Some of the... Um... Some of the kits that they brought out, the license kits... And that might be why they stopped doing it. It's just it was too expensive to keep going. We have the Ghostbusters kit. We have the Scooby Doo kit. We've got um, that Scooby Doo Lego uh, kit is awesome. My wife has the oh the my god, and just how and the it mystery machine. That thing's awesome. How it integrated with the game was so cool. I really, honestly, that is the one. That is one I wish that they would that that Warner Brothers would reinvest in. But of course, it's Warner Brothers, and they suck now, so it's not happening. But I would love to see Warner Brothers bring that back. I think kids would go nuts over it. I had this weird I I have judgment game on the PS3 that scanned oh, yeah. cards into the game. Yeah, that's right. They had that whole ice I remember. thing, like the camera thing. They could do different things. Yeah, remember, and Legos kind of shifted the- a lot. Well, Legos had a pretty diverse thing. They had Lego Lego World for a little bit, which was kind of like an open world kind of build thing. Yeah. Then they've jumped into Fortnite. They've had their own series of games. They've had some things that you could basically just download um, a mobile app and use it with the regular kits that you buy. And they had some functionality that way just through their own development. And that was kind of cool. Uh, Warner brothers is kind of started driving me crazy with nether realm studios right now, but mm. well, Warner brothers is taking a big dirt nap. Hey, right Dub, now. Anyway. Good to see you, they're, man. They're, oh, Dub and dinosaur. What's up? Dinosaur popped in too. I don't, where am I? Why am I not seeing dinosaurs pop up? It should have popped up before then. It didn't pop up in Ninja Chat for whatever reason. It did not. You're right. I don't know what's going on. Hi, Dinosaur. I would have popped it up. I'm sorry. I mean, I see you in the chat popped out, but it didn't pop up in in my mainstream for me to pull it up. That's bizarre. I don't know why. 
That is weird. They did a Ghost Ghost Pacific game. And Dimensions, yeah, they absolutely did. And they did a Back to the Future one as they well. They did a Ghost, yeah. Absolutely. They did yeah. a Back to the Future. I think we have it. I have to go back and see what all I've got. Yeah, the GBA I, and, and I, I think is a cool way of adding adding things to it. And I didn't think much of that at the time. But when I researched that for a video, oh, there it that, is. that was way cooler than I ever gave you credit for. That one oh, there worked, we go. Dinosaurs. Now a Dinosaur pops up. That's weird. It's a different, it's a different, um, it's a different, hold on a sec. Because that's a different uh, Maybe avatar. Maybe one's his account and the other one's his channel. Maybe Social String Ninja's being stupid again. I saw it do that to JDA oh, Delete. Uh, if I would talk on my account, I would pop up in his chat. If I didn't and chat it as uh, my channel, it would break. And I've never okay. had that problem with it until now. Now it seems that, yeah, oh. that's it. That's yeah. what it was. That's I don't weird. know why, but right, well, it's doing that for whatever reason. Uh, I don't that know why weird. it's a thing now. I've seen that happen. That is weird. I've seen it happen. It hasn't. It's the first time it's happened to me, but I've seen it happen in other chats. So that's very, very bizarre. That is. Yeah. Um, uh, Dimensions did do Adventure Time. They had that license. They did a bunch of stuff. What's up, Vince? It's good to see you, man. Vince! What's going on, brother? We got a good crowd tonight. Yes, indeed. We do have a good crowd tonight. Galactic Gaming. Yeah, that's oh, showing so up. Now, see, his is showing up. So why is know, Dinosaurs' like, channel I, not showing up? I, it's just bizarre, man. It happens to some people. And it that is to bizarre. Other it's really weird. I don't know why. That's, that is bizarre. I, I've, I've had it happen to me. I've I've been able to like come in as my channel and everybody else could talk as their as their channel name, but when I would talk as my channel on the JD Delete stream, and I mentioned mm -hmm. it specifically because that's where I've seen it happen the most, or it did it for a while, um, and it wouldn't populate for your social stream engine. But if I went to my account, it worked. It's, it was weird, but it wouldn't happen. Is, it wouldn't work that way for everybody. It wasn't consistent in everybody's stream. It's just bizarre. <laughs> That don't know why. Do not know why. Weird. Dinosaurs are extinct. So you <laughs> think. Dun, 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 yeah, I like dun, 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 dun. I like that. You know what it might be? It might be because his channel and now, his account I agree, are dinosaur. The same. I prefer to chat as my channel, so if somebody randomly follows me, they follow the right thing. I totally get right. it. Right. But but I wonder if I wonder if the reason that you're I, this would be an interesting experiment for people who whose channels and 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 accounts are the same name as yours are. And I'm wondering if that's the problem. And Social Stream Ninja doesn't know how to handle it. Well, that's just it. I think dinosaurs is, is different, isn't it? Because mine's the space historian. No, He's his is the same gaming. for both. And then, his is dinosaurs gaming for both oh yeah he does I'm yeah and I'm wondering if social stream ninja doesn't know how to handle that yeah maybe it's freaking out on that who knows yeah user and account and he's doing the same thing there he is his user there he's account and it works for him <laughs> dinosaurs like I sure do feel extinct sometimes I feel you I feel you <laughs> sir <laughs> Later, Oak City. Thanks for popping in, man. Later, Oak. Now Scrambles wants to eat a dinosaur. That's been a thing on X forever. Like, Peter's like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't eat a dinosaur. If you wouldn't eat a dinosaur, don't eat a chicken. I'm like, I would totally eat a dinosaur. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'd go all Fred Flintstone on that. <laughs> when that man got ribs, he got ribs. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> I have no problem with that. You don't know me. <laughs> See, even your jeans down on it's like I used to eat a dinosaur barbecue in New York. There you go. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, unfortunately, they don't let you do that, man. Like, it's kind of a double-edged sword with Rumble. Like, you don't really know what you're doing when you first start most of the time unless somebody coaches you through it. And so you make mistakes like that because I did. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> you could change your channel name after the fact, but you can't change your account name. 
That's where there's the the geek historian instead of geek historian for the channel name. <laughs> right. Live and learn. Uh, <laughs> so back on the topic, we hit on light guns. We hit on the uh, the the um, Guitar Hero style controllers and rock band. Um, we talked about the wheel peripherals. Uh, Flight sticks is another one that I think would work. Well, there's not honestly outside of Microsoft Flight Simulator and maybe Squadron. There's not a lot of games that would really use that right now that I can think of. Not off the top of my head that are current. There's not a ton of for, games. For f- um, well, Flight Sim. There's still there's Ace Combat. <laughs> that was mean spirited, but I like it. <laughs> Especially since it came from Eugene, the most chill guy ever. <laughs> you should see him when he gets angry, man. It's the funniest thing. He's like, I see. well, that was annoying. That is as, that is as emotional <laughs> as he will get. He's the most chill person I know. Well, he didn't even like use a... Use an exclamation point or anything. No. And Sister Lori's in the house. center. Gamer girl. In the center. Was that the center? Grilled Hello. cheese in house. How you guys doing? Uh, yeah. you super fan. See, she comes and sees. She comes and sees you. She's always streaming when I'm. Well, when yeah, I'm on. Maybe I'm running at a better time. She comes. Maybe I'm just cooler well, than you. You know. You are. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> that is part of it. So. What's up, Killer SV? How you doing? <laughs> hey, Killer. All right, and and you are you are growing the you are growing. I'm trying, man. Hair. It's so gray right here. It's just this big white patch. I'm trying to get it to kind of grow in. I had a couple of people go, you, because I hadn't shaved in like a week, week and a half, because I'd just been lazy. And it was like that kind of looks good on you. You should grow that out. And then they were like, maybe you should check it with the wife first. I'm like, that's a good call. <laughs> And Nicole's like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of letting it grow and kind of trimming a little bit here and there because the mustache keeps going on. I want to curl into my mouth and I don't want to eat my facial hair. It's just not tasty. Um, so I'm trying to keep it trimmed back a little bit in places and just kind of let it grow otherwise and kind of see what happens. If it looks good, I'll keep it. If it doesn't, well, I'm always working, shaving it off. Oh, see, see, and she's trying to play nice with you and say, well, we stream at the same time, Mike. It's really because I'm cooler. I know. It's really because I'm cooler. See, she's she's making me feel better. She's trying to make you feel better because she's a nice person. (laughs) She's trying to make me feel better. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Jet, take care of that like button like you got a lot of discussion if you got Hey, let, let's also take care of that follow button yes, while please. we're at it. Let's, let's, Especially on Rumble. I was the, sitting at like 199. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come the hell on. Right, come hey, on, I'm people. at 200 now. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Good grief. Get the, <laughs> thank you. When I'm sitting on like that one number, when it's about to be a big even number, I'm like, that gum it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. That is, see, <laughs> telling you, yeah, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm glad that um, I'm glad that you've started kind of starting to stream again. And, and yeah, I'm trying to get a little get bit you, more regular about it. The problem is, is I like Mojo to do my edit back. contact, and, and they take that takes time, and so does streaming. So of course, when it, it does. comes down to it, I have to go with what. I feel more passionate about sometimes. And that's, I can understand that edited content. (laughs) Almost always edited content. I can understand that. Yeah. It scrambles. is like, yeah, my mustache keeps getting in my mouth. Exactly. Ah, dinosaur set you up for it too. He says time for a giveaway. What do I win? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You win me on screen. At, I know it's a terrible Nick's prize. Adoration, <laughs> Nick's adoration forever. Doug two two three was my two hundred subscriber. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Always that is appreciated. Awesome. That is Historian awesome. Story has this problem when he tries to put out good content. 
<laughs> sometimes, and sometimes I'm just behind because I'm like sore all weekend. I'm like, oh God, now I'm behind. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are so, on now YouTube just, and you guys see Scrambles the Death Dealer, go check him out. Uh, oh, Scrambles is so cool. Platforms. He's Can totally worth checking day? out. He's totally worth hanging out with. He's a very, very cool guy. Uh, Give the man Sister Laurie followed. I know. That's what I'm talking about. I thought Gabriel was already following me. I thought. I thought you followed me already. Now she's really following okay, you. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I see how it is. Uh huh. Glad you're here now, though. Thank you. <laughs> just, just, just for whatever you know, for whether for whatever it's worth to you, Nick. She's been following me. Yeah, well, you know, you always save the best for last. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good comeback. <laughs> you, you, I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to let you have that because that was actually pretty damn good. That was pretty damn good. Oh, never mind. We both lose. She followed, she followed Galactic Gaming. That's 10. fair. That's fair. That's probably better that than fair. following either one of us. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's, let's call it as it is. Yeah. Call know. a spade a spade. That's right. Mike's old news geek is fresh, fresh meat. meat. <laughs> fresh meat for the grinder. Let's go. There you go for the grinder. So, Scrambles is 19 away from 500. We are, um, where the hell are we? Because we have you were close we've to leveled off. Last time I looked, we are close to six hundred on yeah. Rumble. Let me take a look and see. We've yeah, had, you really we've, got a good bump creeping. from that partner program when you guys were really kind of pushing the we content did. out. That did a really, really we did. good job for you. We are three away from six hundred. Nice. So very nice. Um, the cool thing is that I got to because this is retro roots. I got to say the one thing that that continues to make me happy about Rumble is there is an appetite there and i have to say there because you're you're dual streaming there's an appetite there for retro games and the reason i say that is i look at i look at our streams and they they I, they've leveled there off a bit but many people doing it there's a few people doing it G, uh, jda delete does an excellent job jda uh, does a, excellent excellent job excellent job and i'm and and jda i think you're seeing the same thing i am a lot of my streams get and peter streams get four or five hundred views and that's and for us trust me coming from youtube i don't care what anybody says that is amazing for us what i have been most impressed with the last few retro streams and i'm talking about the the um the ColecoVision, the 32X, like the ColecoVision stream. The ColecoVision stuff is bizarre views. because that video took just blew up on YouTube for unknown reasons. Is, I am so I happy no for you why. on that, man. And then your stream because on it, here did really well. And honestly, um, DJC Game well, Studios not, had a stream that had like 28,000 views on he it. He got featured doing in television. He got yeah. featured. Yeah. Yes. That's fantastic. I was so proud of him, man. He got featured. He had five, six hundred people watching him at once. It was yeah, that's amazing, sick. man. Yes. He probably, he probably like blew my, up. I'm gonna look and see where he's at now. He's getting close to that two hundred mark too. Really? I thought he would have blown past. And he had three it. Or, no. Um my Commodore sixty four stream got eight hundred and thirty five views. My just straight up ant stream arcade stream where I just did random arcade stuff got seven thirty eight. The Scrabbles, um, it's the hard, Amiga. It's hard for people to find your streams on YouTube. That's the thing with YouTube is it, you had the reverse problem yes. in Rumble, right? Uploaded content exactly a struggle to, for anybody to find it. It does nothing. Anybody streams do really well. YouTube uploads seem to do well. Streams hit and miss, right? Yeah. Although I will say, depending, most of my videos oh, did there you well. Go, I, I've had a video or two that I've had a video or two that's hit two or three thousand views. Um, you know, uh, Kerberos Space Program and stuff like that. Most of my videos on YouTube, my unboxings, my the stuff I used to do with Seth, my shmup video, even yeah. my uh, 
even my 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 Donkey Kong video, which I put a ton of work into. You did. That was got a good video. No play. And got no play on YouTube at all. But it didn't get any play on, on Rumble either. It's it, it's there. They need to work on that. We've talked. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole. No, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I think hole everybody. They, they've heard me complain everybody about that is, before. And not that, not you're that not Rick the only one notices you're most of what not, I do. Me and him don't socialize. Um, you're not the only one. But you're not. But the, not you the and Panda are not the it. only two. You're, and, and it's not just you and Panda. There are a growing number of people that are saying it because what they're seeing is they're seeing these ver- these viral videos start getting play, but they're not seeing that they, they need a better mechanism for showing video content. And, and yeah, they the, do. And it, but it's just not something they that do. they've, they've wanted to invest in yet. Right now they're very focused on the streaming aspect. And, and I understand why. And the part of the reason why is that a lot of other stuff that's political is done by stream, right? So having more mechanisms yes. to be able to play into that and help the other communities at the same time is a good route for them to go. So I understand that. Well, and, I, and I think the other thing is, is there are game streamers on they have video content Twitch. in the peripheral as JDA delete starts to pull us back <laughs> into the conversation again. Thank you, sir. I, I, I think that I, I think, and, and it's funny because Scepter says, does Rumble want to be Twitch slash TikTok? There are gamers, and I see, see that's them. Dope, I see them on on online. I see them on Twitter, and they're not people that are on Rumble. There are people on Twitch and YouTube that are straight up gamers that aren't doing commentary videos and hot take videos and drama videos right. and 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 fanboy videos that feel like they're getting pushed out of YouTube and Twitch by we had this conversation with um uh Mrs. Mam and and even gamer and even sister Lori that you know that Twitch is not really a gaming stream area anymore it's for women to show their cleavage and get tons of views there's, there's that's really a, what well, it's there's there's a more there, there's a market for everything there and it's the same way with Cake I, and it's the same with the others and it'll be the same it'll be the same way on rumble as it gets bigger um the content will diversify and people are going to watch what they want to watch and if you're getting edge down it, it's because people because the nature of people to want to watch something like that is there People want to watch it. But what I'm uh, boobs in a kiddie pool is always going to sell. It always going to sell. sell. However, you always get an audience. You could say it's disgusting, however, but they've got like ten to twenty thousand people in I, chat I, watching it. They no, disagree no, with I, you. It, 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 and and I totally get that. I totally understand uh, that. What I'm saying depending is, depending on the part of Twitch you go to, it is that bad. There's a there's a yeah. really good retro community. There's a really good speed running community. There's still plenty of normal gaming that goes on there. But some of your big streamers are young, attractive women, and some of them are like, you know, Morath and all these others that do streams and like jacuzzis and swimming pools and all this other stuff. But the problem is that those are the ones that are edging out the gamers. And that's what I'm saying is, I yes, you can still find it there, well, but Twitch those people are starting to, to complain. Gaming. And honestly, the streaming space, right. and this, we could do an entire topic on streaming itself if you want to do that. And and where, I, where that would it be an go. interesting one. I'm okay one. doing that. I wouldn't call it Retro Roots. We'd call it something else because I'm not going to discuss that on like a gaming. Well, I have been discussing it on a gaming podcast, but it's beside the point. <laughs> but if well, you we can discuss that, it, we can sit we, down on night and just talk about this the the state of streaming, and we can get a couple of other people in here. You too. know what? Maybe that that or we can do it if you want if, if you want to keep it out of retro roots we could do it over on my channel we can yeah, cuz uh, i've been retro wanting to talk roots, about I this like to keep focus more on like gaming yeah yeah yeah, yeah. your podcast kind of becomes but, well you talk gaming you also talk other things other than gaming on other there too. things that it, right right my po- i guess the, the point i was making was is that there are a lot of people that are strict gamers reason that the that uh, there is a there's a growing rumble gaming section because there are people that are tired of Twitch basically putting all of their energy and concentration into those people that that we're just talking about and I tell you and and I have to tell you 
between Gamer Girl and Shanity and Mrs. Ma'am and Sammy and some others that I've seen, there are a number, Pep Killer, there are a number of incredible female streamers that just want to play games and have fun yeah. and 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 not sell they're not selling they're selling their personality right because to, to be honest Lori is an amazing personality on 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 stream and i'm not saying that just because she's in the chat she's an amazing person stream and one of the things i love about her she can she tries so hard not to cuss and throw f-bombs in the exact same sentence and it's the cutest thing I've, you'll ever see um and but it's her personality and she's not selling down here she's selling up here yeah. and she's selling her gaming ability and i'll tell you what and that's how most that of the people where, that i've seen on rumble most of the female streamers on rumble i've seen have done that done it that way i um i and i twitch love is, it twitch is and, a different and, ball game because they've learned what makes money on there right and they're clearly right. looking for money they, they want money out of this platform. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And Some of them are making a like living doing that. On there, and then we're going to kind of nix this part of the conversation. Then we'll yeah, 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 because we got to get back to it. Yes, because to... quite frankly, the reason they're pushing them is because people will give her fifty, seventy five hundred dollars at a shot. She's constantly <laughs> pulling in cash. Oh, the whole time right. she's on stream, just tons and tons of cash. And Twitch gets a cut of all of that. And if they're bringing you money... Then you're going to promote them. That's just how that works. Correct. That's business. And Twitch yep. already runs at a deficit. They already don't make money for Amazon. They're a net loss last time I heard. And so they have trouble getting funding to be able to do some of the things that they want to do because Amazon just doesn't want to put the money into it because they're considered a loss, right? They're not bringing them enough revenue. Right. So they're going to go with what they can get. And those people bring money and they need money. <laughs> so there you go. That's how the world yeah. functions. So I'm definitely down to they have don't that make money. Well, Twitch, I don't think started as an extension of Amazon. I think they got bought. They, didn't. By they Amazon. got bought by Amazon. So they got bought by Amazon. So Amazon owns them now, but they don't, Amazon doesn't see them as really profitable. And I haven't in a while. Um, there's a couple of people I've watched videos on on YouTube and, and they know more about the ins and outs of Twitch because they stream there all the time. And they have said multiple times that uh, Twitch has a difficult time giving their partners a higher cut because they already don't make a lot of money. So when they go to argue that we can get more people or we can do this if we give up more money um, to the streamers or if we do this and the other and we invest in this and the other, they often get shot down by Amazon corporate because they just don't have the cards to play to justify the kind of expense that they would want. So that's that's just kind of where they are. Killer. So Killer is correct. I had forgotten about that. Twitch was originally Justin TV, which I used to watch. See if the FBI is listening. I used to watch wrestling pay-per-views on Justin TV. I, I remember that. That is that is great memory just uh killer oh and dinosaur yeah Anyhow. um multi-streaming is is a good idea if you can absolutely set it up and you don't have the same kind of migraine headache i have trying to do it on the regular um to set it up because uh pixel kitten does the same thing she does twitch and rumble so she's on there as well and she has a good following on both. She's got like over 700 people that follow her on Twitch and she's growing pretty quickly on Rumble. Um, not as fast as I feel like she's growing on Twitch, but Twitch is just a bigger platform. So there's just more people right. with eyes on there that can eventually stumble into your stuff. So, and Kick's kind of the same way. Kick's kind of a little bit, I think Kick's a little bit lower than Twitch, but a little bit higher than Rumble. But, um, okay. On peripherals, I'm kind of a little lost right. where we're at. We talked about the robot. We talked about the power glove. We talked about flight sticks. We were talking about flight sticks a little bit, and then Both we got sense. sidetracked. We talked about racing. So uh, let's talk about let's, let's talk about let's talk about some really cool PC style controllers. Um, so you're a PC guy. I'm an old PC guy. Yes. I haven't played. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a newer PC guy. But I'll tell you what. One Microsoft of the best Dual controllers Strike I've had is due for a comeback. 
Well, I was going to go slightly different. I was going to go with the Microsoft Sidewinder Force Feedback. Oh, you're talking about their flight stick version? No. Well, it it could be a flight stick, but I'll tell you what I played the most. I played the most with it were the Star Wars games, the Jedi Outcast, the Jedi Knight series, because that stick had force feedback in those games. And when you were lightsaber battling, you felt it in the joystick. It was it was amazing when you fired a gun. You felt it in the stick. I had stick. this. The Force so it, Feedback Pro? Yeah. Uh, I used this on yes. um, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Yeah, I used it as a flight stick. I didn't use it on anything other I than used, flight games. I used it on I used it on those on those Star Wars games too. They it was amazing. That is a that is something that's gotta come back. Microsoft I, 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 that would be a perfect and it does, and I don't think you could do wireless. I think you'd have to have wired for that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I would prefer I would, wired. That would it's be one like thing. having an arcade stick, which never really yes. went away. They, though that's one of those that, like, if that gone away, it would have been on like, no, those need to come back now, like now, now. But those never went away, and for good reason. Anybody to get serious about a fighting game wants an arcade stick. Sidewinder, the Sidewinder sold incredibly, incredibly well. Scepter. Um, I, I remember those were very, very popular. You did need an AC adapter because that's what controlled the rumble. And sometimes the right. rumble and the force feedback on that, because it didn't just do rumble, it would actually snap the controller. Oh, it, 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 it would it, really no, kick no, no, the no. controller. It was, true, it was true force feedback. Now, yeah, you what wouldn't it really need it needed today. Because it, needed better, it needed, like mine didn't have suction cups on the bottom, and it really needed them. <laughs> Because sometimes I don't it would remember. Move too yeah, I think much. you're right. I think it just had the. I think it just had the the rubber feet. Yeah, it didn't um, have any kind of suction cups you, or any way to like mount it to anything. So when it kicked, it didn't like you know, like because if you were trying to hold it and it kicked, it could almost knock it out of your hand. It really had a lot of force. Yeah, you, you it had a pretty need, serious motor, which is why it needed an AC adapter. It had a pretty brutal. It had motor. a crazy motor, but I don't think you would need a motor now because of course you can. You could just use USB to power it. A dinosaur, I love Crimson oh, Skies. Oh, yes. Dude, Crimson I, I Skies have that is on my, amazing. I think I have that on my Xbox Series it's, X it's, downstairs. I need to put it, more time into it. That's a great game. It's back compatible. It's it's totally yeah. back compat. It is, yep. I, Crimson Skies, that is a game that needed a sequel. That That's one that needs way. to come back, frankly. That, that's that, a, that needs a, to that come back. Needs a sequel. Uh, you should be, if you have a series X or series S, uh, it is backwards compatible. And I think you can buy it for like roughly five bucks if you don't already have your disc. So you can just inst buy it and install it. Um, that's how I was playing it when I booted it up last. It doesn't, it upscales a little bit. It's not amazing on its upscaling, but it definitely is playable. Let's put it that way. And it's still fun. Yeah, Killer, the, since it was an Xbox game, they didn't rework its architecture well enough for it to pop up on the PC version of Game Pass. And that's part of the reason I had the Series X, um, or I would have a Series S at minimum, because there's some back-compatible games that you can get that are only available on console. They are not available on the PC Game Pass. So if you want the full range of stuff that's available on Game Pass or available for the for the ecosystem as a whole, it's still worth having a console for that reason alone. <clears throat> okay, Scramble's saying his second show is where it's all about music gear. I only have 49 subs, and yet you had a video that had like 2,000 views. That's amazing. Love that stuff. But yeah, no. No, that one, um, and I want to say the Microsoft Dual Strike. Uh, I don't remember the Dual Strike. I'm looking it up now. I don't. That one, I don't. I know actually that I did remember. a video on this one, and I'll see if I can find a larger picture. Uh, let me see if I can download this one. Uh, save image. Just do the downloads. Yep. And then open that up, bring that over here. And there's the screen view. And let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. This. 
if oh, you've seen the screen. Oh, I remember that thing. Is a Sidewinder. And this is kind of a cool thing. idea. And this is one that I didn't invest in when I was younger because I didn't understand it. I did it, not a either. A lot of people swear about this controller. And I can totally see why. These two pieces move independently. You can twist this up and down for forward and back movement. You can move this yep. in and out to aim side to side and twist it up and down yep. to, move, to move the aim up and down. It was almost like a cursor. It was like moving yes. a mouse cursor. Yes. For people who don't really want to use a mouse and keyboard or want something that's got a little bit, maybe a little bit faster, because you can make it like this to where this has like faster controls than analog, current analog sticks if you designed it right. And you can make it almost as snappy, and you can make it an attachment or a peripheral for a current Xbox console and make it something really special once people get used to it, right? Because it's going to take a little getting used to because it's kind of a rear controller. But yeah, this is a very cool, underrated idea of a controller, I feel like. Yes. Do you have a Do you have a uh, picture of this of the Sidewinder? Uh, let me see if I can get one downloaded. But yeah, I found one. I just didn't get it downloaded. Hang tight. Let me flip back over here while I hunt because there's no reason for people to see my me hunting stuff. Back in tight tonight. That's asking a lot for me on an evening. I've had those days. I have a lot of those days. It's like kind of like walking and chewing gun at the same time. It never seems to work out well for me. Uh, move that down like that. Here we go. Let's go back to screen view. This is what you're talking about, if I believe. Now, the one that you're talking about actually had the force feedback. Let me see if yes. I can find an image of that. But that's a base sidewinder. That's not the force yep. feedback pro version, which had a, and its own power supply and a motor. Correct. Uh, I do remember Revolt. I never played it, but I do I have, remember I, I have it. I have it on the Dreamcast. It came with... Uh, I have it on Dreamcast, and it actually came in the uh, Xbox Live beta in 2001. I, uh, I, I have both versions of it. Revolt was so good. Trying to find a larger version of the Sidewinder with the... Oh, this is it. This one will work. This thing was such a monster. While you're getting it up. Yeah, this is the Sidewinder. <laughs> Let me zoom in on this and scroll through this thing. This is the motor, guys. This whole side is the motor. Matter of fact, it had a fan right here. Yep. This thing was... I don't think that was a fan. I don't think that's a fan. Is that if you not notice, a fan? there's no... It's not a what fan. I think it's just... That? I don't know. I think it's just a design. By the way, um, here you go. You don't have to make me oversized he can see it here here you go dinosaurs yeah there's revolt of course oh yeah this this is a cool cool game rc racing yeah n64 apparently um, got revolt too and he said yep that's it racing through neighborhood parks and museum store yep yep i'd heard of red revolt it really it was it's a great game oh it's five dollars on steam you know what that's cool it, it, I could uh, I could be convinced next Monday to do a Dreamcast night and throw this in. I might have to do a might have to do a uh, might have to do a poll on on Twitter to see who wants what. Um, I yep, remember RC, RC Pro Am. RC Pro Am is a great game. I I'm terrible at it, but game. I will I will go to my grave saying that's a good game. It was rare soft, and if you are on Xbox, it is party play. Yeah. But that's one of those I think that you almost version. have to have the console in order to get that with the function the way you want it to function. All right. Well, like I said, it's if you have an Xbox, it's part of rare replay and it's yes. the original RC Pro Am. Yeah, and that one's I can't remember if that one's on the switch 
the Switch Online servers for the NES. It might be on there, too. So that's another way to play it. Or you can just emulate it. You know, whatever floats your boat. Yep. I mean, that game's old enough and rare is not really holding anybody hostage in that particular game. And I don't. And Nintendo doesn't have any rights to really squash that one um, because they don't own it. Now, they still, thanks to Microsoft, kept a pretty good working relationship with Rarosoft, which is good. I'm always happy to see them keep a working relationship with them because that's, in my mind, that they kind of started on Nintendo Assistance for me. And then when they moved away, they kind of started doing a bunch of stuff that I was just kind of like not as into. Um, like Sea of Thieves, I've never really gotten into. And then there was like the Connect Sports thing that they did and a couple of other things. They've all been projects they want to do. So, but it's just not the the rare I kind of fell in love with personally. Yeah, so it's it's really funny though that because if you want to talk about you know we could talk about rare at some some point, but that actually Nintendo is not what I remember all of them for. They they were all they were very much older than that, and a lot of yeah. those games that uh, on Rare Replay are from their old Ultimate Play the Game days. That was like old like Commodore sixty four like they they really had games there. And like the ZX Spectrum before, before they went anywhere to Nintendo. Uh, speaking of the space orb, if I can find a picture of it, there was another. Descent. One. Yeah, there was there was another controller that was made for that. That was kind of like bonkers. That I thought was like a super cool idea, and I'm finding a hard time finding a good picture of it because they're all like really small pictures. Yeah, we'll use his picture. It's a thumbnail for his for his channel, but he can sue me for it or not. LGR did a video on this. I've done a video on this thing. Um but people swore by this for descent. Oh, let me see. The Spaceball space 3D space gamepad. Ball. This thing allowed you to kind of move in all sorts of different directions using this and then using these for the functionality. And people swore by this for like some of the weird shooters like Descent. That that game worked brilliantly with this kind of controller. Now, that is it, interesting. It was reportedly terrible for other controllers. Let me see if I can find the other picture. It looks yeah. like, honestly, it looks like a trackball. Yeah. Here's the movements with it. Uh, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can save this and because this is going to look terrible blown up, but it's going to be the best I can do. So you could move left and right with it. You could move up, you could move down and then down to the side and straight down. It was supposedly an early solution for a fully three dimensional controller before yeah. we started using like dual analog sticks and stuff for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it was basically a trackball. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like an advanced trackball. The company is still around, Space balls. too. Oh, shit, there goes the gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're still they're still around. There's a, the, the company is uh, called 3D Connection. It's a, it basically from Logitech, and they still make space balls. And they're basic. Cool. I mean, now they're more for now they're more for. Um, uh, they're kind of more for for windows and stuff like that. I mean, trackballs became a pretty big thing. Yes, and and that became. Now that became I used like a trackball for a long time. I used it for FPSs, and it was great. I did too. Um, the Microsoft one that had the wheel further towards the back instead of at the front was far more comfortable. And when they stopped making that one, I moved away from them. I'm like, cause I didn't want to have my hand like shoved all the way to the front like that. It was uncomfortable. And they, while they still make track balls, they make them in a design that I'm not physically comfortable using. Ah, oh, dub. My guys keep me Favorite race game in 2000. still hydro thunder. Yeah. Hydro thunder is amazing. Yes, please hit the like button. Please hit the follow button. I need to come up with like a scene I can play. Crap. 
Hydro Thunder, I don't have anymore because I have um because I got I have Hydro Thunder and everything. No, so you I know me, that's the that's one. I forgot that the one that I have, I have Hydro and Thunder now I'm not on the Xbox. Up on camera for some reason. Now that's you're weird. not showing up. That's bizarre. I have I Hydro why. Thunder Arcade on the Midway Connect collection, but I also have Hydro Thunder Hurricane on the Xbox. Oh, there so. you go. <laughs> I was yeah. I was invisible. So I. I forgot that I didn't have the original Hydra Thunder Dreamcast anymore. It's funny because Microsoft actually owns that IP. They do, but the only version that I could find on the Xbox to be able to play, or at least on Game Pass for PC, it's, was their mobile version, which made me very angry. Yeah, I don't know where they. I don't know where Hurricane went. I don't know, and I don't know if they. Yes, thank you for the sub. The you original, put me at two hundred, man. I was at one ninety nine. Nice. I lobotomized that like That's right, he subscribed did. an hour ago. Um, I don't know if I couldn't find an actual console version to play because I was going to grab that and play it. As a matter of fact, I think I bought that version and then I realized it was a crappy yeah. mobile version of it that didn't run right on PC and I refunded it immediately. Oh, I know why. I know why you can't find it. You might be able to find it physical. Because it's a 360 game. It's not an Xbox One game. It's a 360 game. Yeah, I might be able to find it on the series. But I think when I looked for it on the it's, series, I still found the mobile version. I didn't find the actual console backward, version. It, it's backward compatible. Yeah, but I don't own the disc, so I can't really do it that right. way. I was you hoping to, to be find, able to just you download to it, it like you can most of those games like Crimson Skies and a bunch of others. Um, yeah, I, I would think, have done well, it that way because I would also, have down a disc. They're also, they're also getting ready to get rid of the Xbox 360 store. Oh, that's a whole other problem we've talked about a couple times. You know what? Yes. Honestly, I'd love to see something like the oh, Game Genie and all that come back. And with the Switch, I think it would work. Because one of the reasons the Game Genie and oh, all well, that stuff stopped working was because you had to have that hardware interface to be Here. able to grab the data as it was going across and Here. reinterpret it and toggle the switches. Um, it kind of stopped. Dude, I just dropped it with CDs. I just dropped it in the chat in, in the, the link to, uh, to buy it. It's 10 bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Is that on our chat here or on the control room chat? Or are you, yeah, on the video okay. chat. There it is. Okay. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> okay. It is fantastic. Is that the I love and it's think it is because I it it's 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 developed by Vector Unit, um, who is a very good developer, and um, and it's published by Microsoft. It's owned by Microsoft. Because I thought this was the one that I bought, but you know I might try the free trial on that and see. I'll do that later. I'm not going to do that right now because we're in the middle of a stream. But the Game Genie, I think, would the Game Genie works best when it's working with like actual hardware. So if you have carts, yes, um, that's where the Game Genie really shines. Other than that, you have to have like I don't know some sort of CD manipulation. But I think that's really kind of what killed stuff like the Game Genie because you can't plug in, you can't really plug it into it. Yeah, I don't. The only way yeah, to do that would be to have like would... an external CD-ROM drive that you put your disc into and then you plugged it in through USB or something and tried to work it that way. Um, I, I don't know how you work around well, that. Because it, it grabbed so, the data so, before it got to the console and then sent different data to the console. Yeah. And it's hard to yeah, do and that see, with that's CD. just it. It booted, see, the, the Game GD was a boot device. It was a yes. boot disc. And that's the problem. You can't... Everything now boots up with its own UI. You'd have to figure out how to. Yeah, you'd have to be able to. Get, now, in the digital world, you might be able to boot that up, have it get a list Here of guys, your games, gonna... and then run it through an interpreter and do it that way. Now, whether or not you'd be able to get that out there, because there's, I mean, already emulators I and interpreters think... and stuff like that, people stamp down hard on those now. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can. So I don't know if you'd be able to get I, away with that because you'd have to have it be able to go between you and the game. And I know a lot of people would cry foul on that 
on anything that was online, which is virtually everything now has an online component because you'd be able to grab that data and be able to do things with it that you could possibly then take online because it's going through the system and doesn't look like anything different by the time it actually hits the online services. So it alludes to a potential cheating issue that might not be grabbed appropriately. So I think that also might kind of kill it. You know what I mean? From that perspective. Yeah, I don't think, I think because of the... Oh, dub in with the $2. Thank you for the link. Thank you for the link. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Um, I think I think the problem, the biggest problem is, is that because it's such a closed architecture, Microsoft, uh, Sony, especially Nintendo, but Microsoft, Microsoft and Sony would never allow it. They'll never yeah. allow it, and there's no way to get well, around it. I know it. Nintendo wouldn't allow it. They don't even like emulators, man. They almost completely oh, no, got RetroArch shut down in Steam. I had to download it independently to be able to download any of the cores for it that were useful. <laughs> like, I couldn't even get a Genesis core for RetroArch on Steam. There was no way to do it. And I'm like, this is weird. But if I use it independently of it. Steam, it works fine. Yeah, I'm surprised Steam had it. I just get it right off the site. Steam has RetroArch, but there's no more development being done on it. Mostly because Nintendo and a couple other people went laid into them about emulation, and I think yeah, they just go right to their. I you can go right go to right their right site and grab it. Because yeah. I decided to install it on my PC so I can manipulate that a little bit easier, and then if I want to move things over to my Steam Deck, I can. I can play that more mobily. But if I'm sitting in front of my computer streaming, I can just pull these things up here and just you know use it through no, my normal just, just, PC. Just get it right now. Just get it because that's what I use to. That's what I use on um, on my Windows 11 build on my VCS. Just your best bets. Just get it right off the um, right off the RetroArch uh, site well, that's because what I they're did. still. I mean, they updated. Yeah, I already had yeah, it on. I already I already had it on Steam because I was trying to use it to set up the Steam Deck at one point. As I was trying yeah, to they it still in the ecosystem, but when I tried using it today, as a matter of fact, to set it up just to see how it worked. Because I thought it might be a little bit more flexible just to grab things and move them around that way, as opposed to getting them on like a flash cart and then moving them over and loading them on the Steam Deck and all this other madness. I'm like, yeah, let me just do this. Um, that it worked, but it only worked for a very limited amount of stuff, and there was I couldn't find a way to add new cores. And when I downloaded it yeah, independently, it's... I could immediately download new cores really quick. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So that makes more. I sense. don't even. Yeah, and yeah you can also just buy the, the consoles and stuff like that, like the Soldier Boy console, and there's like a dumb million keep, others that, that are even cheaper than that one, because that one was like 50, 60 bucks, but you can buy it. Well, you can buy them on Amazon for like $10, and they've got like 20,000 games on them. Um, yeah, you can do all of that stuff. You can grab all that stuff. I know multiple people have done that. Uh, story about the Revo game is when his kids were little, they'd watch him play it. So he went and ended up tracking other maps and put their pictures on the wall. Aw, that's cool. Nice. That's cool, Dino. Yeah, with 100K ROMs. Yeah, yeah. But some of them work. Some of them oh. don't work. But, I mean, you got a ton of games on there. So, you know, take with it what you will. Yeah. So are there any other uh, things? We've been going for about two hours. Are there any other peripherals that yeah, you, I'm trying to that think you of... want to talk about tonight that you might want to see kind of make a bit of a comeback? We've talked about a couple off-the-wall ones. I don't think anybody wants to see the sonar yeah. machine come back. Nobody really needs the sonar. No. Um, I do think I there mean, needs most to be... of us would really like to see the Pedestate make a big comeback for personal home use. Let's be honest. Yeah. I do think... <laughs> <laughs> I do think... I do think more... I do think they need to get back to making better arcade sticks. You know, some of the older arcade sticks, um, you know, even in the 360 and PS2 era. What the, bugs me the most about arcade sticks is I don't want to have to buy ones for each console. That bugs me. Um, if I put my so, arcade stick in PC mode, it should work on my Xbox. Stop selling me an Xbox version of the thing that I already bought that works on PC and PlayStation. Let me use it on your Xbox. I don't want to buy a second copy of this. That's just pissing me off. That's why I don't do fighting no. games on the Xbox. And I won't do it on Xbox. No, I will I will tell you that, and, and I think this is one that if I didn't get it 18 years ago, I would probably have bought it now. 
is the X arcade stick. That I want to play Nitro Socks for PS1 with a pit of sedate. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that arcade stick you guys see me playing with, the, the X arcade stick that I've got, yes. um, is amazing. And knock on wood, still has not been locked out by Microsoft. Don't tell anybody. Um, and be, and it actually works with uh, the adapter. I the adapters you can get for it for PlayStation, uh, like P. Like the adapter I have is Dreamcast, GameCube, PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, um, Dreamcast, Xbox, and then I uh, Xbox Series um, One and up. And then I have a separate adapter for um, uh, for the Xbox. OG Xbox. So I it, this thing it's one stick, but then you get the the little adapters and the adapters will plug into just about anything. The only thing that yeah. I'm waiting on them to make is like a Saturn adapter. I'd love to see them do that. Yeah, what I have right now and is, that is two a, different stick types. And the first one I'm going to show is the one that's kind of awkward that most people won't really understand. And this is my current hip Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a nice and one. And this thing's kind of amazing because these these are these are your main movement buttons. Here's your back, down, forward, and then your jumps down here. And then the other buttons are all like your normal fight stick buttons. And this allows you kind of a little bit more precision control when you're doing fighting games, once you can get used to it. It's very weird to get used to, harder in some games than others. And I have an actual arcade stick. Hold on a second. Have in mind. And I'll show you mine after you show yours. Because I, this is my pride and joy. This one's harder to get down because it's bigger and it's bulkier. This is a uh, yeah, that's a, a Nacon that's a beauty Nacon fight stick. This is probably the best fight stick I have ever owned. This is the PlayStation version. They make an Xbox version of the same stick. Um, this thing's phenomenal. I, I have mine set up with a bat top. It comes with a ball top as well. And it has the ball top on it by default. I like the bat top better on this version. I feel like I have more control over it. Um, the extra ball top sits in there. And then the cable fits in here as well. So you can use it that way. But this is an excellent arcade stick. And these things are, arcade sticks are not cheap. Either one of these is somewhere between two and $300. These things are yep. not cheap. It's like getting a steering wheel. They are expensive as hell. And well, I don't know if it would help with check Fu. Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> uh, it does. So, I believe it does. All right, so so let me show you. Let me show you this. So people there's have your, seen this. That there's your ASMR for a fight stick, if you can hear that. But yes. Nice. So here's the one that I have, and the, and and if you've watched my Monday Night Retro streams, you have seen me use this. This is my X arcade. Now this one is a dual tank stick. You can get them in a single and you can get them with a, um, with a, uh, trackball in the middle. This is also real parts. You can hear yeah. it. These are real arcade parts and, and, um, it, it's actually made of wood. It is actually made of, of complete wood. It actually, it's got buttons on the side for like uh, pinball machines. It's got a button on the back. This is 18 years old. And the cool thing about X Gaming is every stick that they ever sold from the beginning of time is forward compatible. And what I mean by that is you, you have this, you have, you have basically a serial cable. And you can you can actually open this thing up and retrofit it with a USB if you wanted to. But the serial cable has worked forever. All right. And what you get are these modules. So a serial cable plugs into, say, this module. And this module then plugs into one and two players into my OG Xbox. Okay. I also have this module, which has... Dreamcast, GameCube, and PlayStation. And then you on the PlayStation, you have a brick 
um, PlayStation USB controller uh, converter. So this, no shit, plugs into my Xbox Series X. So people have watched me play Antstream Arcade when I did like the Commodore 64 and the Amiga and and um, and all that. That is this 18-year-old arcade stick plugged in with this. And it is it, it, this thing feels like the day I got it. And and there is an actual way. <laughs> Somehow I knew something made my time for you guys with that and compared your sticks. Kind of surprised it, it took this long. Now you know what each other's working with and so yep. he. <laughs> now, I'm going to just one more thing about this because this is the coolest thing about this stick. This dual tank stick can be two players. You see the one and two, but an Anstream Arcade has games like Karate Champ, which were the and when Smash oh, TV so you can was use part both of it. The sticks as the you controls. can use both sticks as controls. Yeah, so I can play you guys Karate who don't Champ. Know Karate Champ. Uh, its well, original dual stick control game. scheme didn't have buttons. It had two um, two sticks. Two sticks. And you use those and that's in combination, how you and apparently it controlled very, very bad. But it was at least a very unique control scheme. Yeah, it was. It yeah, it didn't control great. I it, should probably it had, cover the controls that for like had a lot rare of the, experiences one week. Yeah, the, it had a lot that. of the, it had a lot of delay in the controls, but you could. But it was great. Smash uh, Smash TV that you had um, two sticks where one one was move and one was shoot. This worked perfectly for so. I love this. And the only thing I haven't used it on yet is the Dreamcast because it's not analog. So I'd have to pick games that didn't use the analog stick. Um, so like games like um, Dynamite Deca, you know, or, or, or in the U.S. it's uh, uh, Die Hard Arcade, um, stuff like that. This would work great for stuff that needed the, the analog. This wasn't the best for. Um, but this is, this thing, like I said, it's forward compatible and I'm, I haven't tried uh, plugging I don't this know into the PS5. Have, let me look and see if they even sell that. Cause I don't even know if the XR Kate sticks sold anymore. Oh yeah. Oh, are you kidding? It's yeah, absolutely. Hang on. I'll get you, I'll oh, get you the no, link. I, I found it. Oh, okay. X gaming. Not only do they sell it, they still sell. They still sell all of the adapters. Yeah, they have a new tank. They have a new Tank Max one that's coming out apparently. Yes, with a spin. Oh shit! It's got a spinner, it's got a spinner in the center spinner of it. on it. Woof! And but it's again, got like a little twist style thing. Looks like for um, um, jeez. I feel like games like like um, Tempest, Discs yeah. of Tron. Yeah, anything that would use a spinner. And you it looks like there's a spinner and you attachment can, for it. And you can replace the parts in it. So they, they still sell all the buttons and um, uh, you can, you can, you could, you can convert it to USB. You can do upgrade. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with this. You can actually even put it into, they make an arcade cabinet you can put this thing I was about into to say, I if mean, i was gonna have that i'd want to put it in an actual cabinet because it's just too bulky for where i play i mean it's yeah. great don't get so, me wrong it looks awesome it's just too bulky and i here, don't need the second one 99.9 percent .9 of the time right here bring this up on the screen i just put it in the chat oh oh you want it on screen view yeah 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 there we go yeah uh go to um go down Scroll down and go to. You want to pull uh, the video? No. Oh, go. Uh, go. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, keep keep scrolling down. Okay. Because at the bottom it should show where it says shop. Go to uh, X Arcade Machine. It's the fourth option down in shop. Yeah. That one on the left. Oh, the sit down. Oh no, the one. Yeah. Here. Yeah. That is a full size cabinet. And what you do is it's just the cabinet and the monitor. And then you take your tank stick and you put it in. You put it in the cabinet. It's 
If I if I had two grand, I'd be See, doing this it. is this is honestly not a terrible solution for me because then I could slap that together mm-hmm. and that would give me like the total screen space of everything that I might want. Because what I'm gonna spend to build the one that I want to build is this much or more. <laughs> Yeah, this is... With a bunch of different graphics so and stuff, which is kind of cool. That's pretty dope. I wonder, I like okay, it. so what's included? So what comes with it? Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. What's included? X-Arcade stand-up arcade machine, a 32-inch mm, yep. industrial grade monitor. Your choice of any game console adapters. Confirm after your order. Control panel nice. with pinball buttons and trackball. Supports arcade. Oh, games. snap. Looks like it comes with a stick. So it comes with the stick. That's, That's what it seems like. Yes, it does. So it's a fully uh, contained unit. Nice. So that's cool. Yeah, this company is amazing. I, I rem- so so full disclosure. Not that I should have to disclose this, but it, when when I had the NLG website. They sent me that stick, that exact stick to review. And I slobbered all over that review for good reason. You guys still see me using it today. It is it. it, it th- these sticks are not cheap. So if you want like the regular tank stick, it's a it's it's a two hundred dollar. The one with the trackball is two hundred bucks, but it will last you freaking forever. Yeah. And most of these arcade sticks forever. Will, like the Nacons, the hit boxes and stuff like that. If you buy a good one, like I've got an even beefier one than that Nacon one, just the Nacon ones, I think overall a better stick. Um, a lot of these things will take a huge beating and just keep running forever. Uh, the problem you'll have with some of these is they're not always forward compatible, right? Almost anything works right. on PC is going to continue to work on PC. It's rare that it won't continue to work. I've got older sticks that continue to work on PC to this day that I bought like five, 10 years ago. Um, but you know, if you're moving from like console generation to console generation, you have to rely on them to make them compatible. Now, most of them have been pretty good. Like most PS4 era sticks will work on a PS5. Same way with Xbox one to Xbox series for the most part. So, but you can't always count on that. Right. So it kind of, Take that with a grain of salt. Like digital pinball, have values pinball games, swivel TV mount, normal tile games. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing digital pinball, getting one that has like the slappers on the side would be really cool. That could be a fun option. And that one has it. That's my understanding. And this one does. Yeah. So something like that might be good for you because then you could just keep it in your lap and you can use that to, to play that for like your digital pinball and stuff like that. For me... Something like this layout seems more ideal for something that I might do for when I had friends come over and stuff like that. Because it's a good way of having a nice stand-up cabinet. And then if this thing can yeah, just it's... come out and you can use it separate of this, that'd be even better. Which I think it probably does. So I think we've kind of covered the gambit. Of what we want to cover tonight, I think so. Uh, Mike, I know you got. I know you got your NLG show tomorrow. Are you doing like a guest feature, or are you just doing like a uh, standard show tomorrow? Because you've been doing a we're lot doing of a guest standard show, lately. but we have been. We've we've been getting a lot of uh, of Rumble folks on it, and we're not done yet. Um, April twelfth, uh, ETN HVAC is coming on. He's a really good guy. We still are. Uh, we've still got people that that are. You know, we're working on getting on the show. Um, but uh, tomorrow night, uh, an old friend of ours is just coming by to talk, uh, drawn TJ. He'll be on and just kind of chatting with us, not necessarily like a special guest kind of thing. He just, right. you know how it is. Once once somebody comes on the show, they always, we, we always open invite to them. So if they, if they want to. Uh, um, Where's Chris been lately? I see Peter on all the time, but I don't see Chris on as Chris, much. Chris retired. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, he got life. Well, I do too, and he's still he's still in the chat and stuff like that. But life, life caught up to him. He's um, he got a promotion at work, um, and and he just doesn't have the time anymore to 
um, to do the podcast. And he's trying I to he'd retire. It wasn't, it wasn't, but half the time yeah, I watch would, half of your show when I'm sitting in my computer room and I can actively listen. And then the other half, I'm kind of like just in chat talking with the chat because I'm sitting on the couch with a wife and I can't always have the volume up enough to engage because we're watching something on TV. So a lot of times I miss like half the conversation that's going on for that reason. So, well, and, and Mike and lost Mike. <laughs> Mike down. Uh, let's see if he pops back into the control room. Or did the control room die? Nope, there's Mike again. Okay. No. No, he's gone. Okay. There we go. Okay. I have no idea what happened, man. No, that was on that was my computer. My nick just dropped for a second. Oh and then came back up. Okay. That was weird. Um uh, where was I? Um so yeah, so Chris is talking to me about uh, doing some some streaming, um, getting back to doing some game streaming um, when he's available. So, um, and uh, Dub, to answer your question, hey, Dub, we're yes, glad to have so, you, man. Come on by. I'm gonna absolutely be try to st- and make sure to check out Mike's channel as well. You can find him from from the link in chat. Um, he streams most nights of the week. I stream a lot more regularly. I'm trying to get more regular by doing things on at least Wednesday. And then I would like to do Saturday and Sunday as well. So it'd probably be more like three days a week. Happy to hear that. That's about Very what I can do um, right now as far as streams, but I do uploads as well. So those come out. Uh, there'll be one out this Wednesday. And then I'm hoping I can get the editing done to have one either this Friday or next Friday. I have one coming out on the Adventure of Lolo series that I've been wanting to wrap up. Um, and so I'm probably about five or six minutes in on that one. That one's about 13, 14 minutes that I'm trying to work through. Um, so hopefully that one will be out in the next week or two. But I'm trying to, to cut through and carve out enough time to be able to pull that off. Uh, it might be that I end up really co-streaming on Thursday too because I've been doing, lately I've been doing Final Fantasy with... Uh, Fuse Agus and a bunch of the other guys. So it might be that I just kick off a stream when I do that as well and just let that be like an evening's entertainment because I'm spending a couple hours gaming with them. So that might be that might become a thing as well. I don't know yet, but you know, that's kind of where my headspace is now, right now. I don't want to get sucked into streaming all the time because uh, there's other things I want to work on and I've got other real life commitments and stuff I got to do. But yeah. Yeah. So what thank I you, so for us, yeah, thank you, brother Sai. Um, so yeah, tomorrow night's the NLG show at nine thirty, and then yes. uh, Wednesday is Wednesday is Peter's night to stream. So we do NLG live with him, and he I'm not sure what he's doing yet. Um, he had some sort of then, like night game on there or fantasy setting game that I wasn't really. He, I, I love Peter, but that oh, game Kingdom, was boring. <laughs> Kingdom Come, well, it's Kingdom Kingdom Come Deliverance. Um, it was a great game when it released, but you know, it's it is what it is. Um, I'll be back on Thursday then uh, to do some more Evil West. I'm going to do Evil West for a little bit until they patch Dragon Dog Dragon's Dogma Two, and then I'm going to get into that. Yeah, everybody's been and raving Friday, on that one. I don't. I didn't play the original Dragon's uh, Dogma, so. It looks cool. It, it does looks really look cool. I'm so I'm interested in it, but I'm waiting. There's a bunch of patching that I need to do to it. Mm-hmm. So the other, and then Friday night, um, which is our multiplayer stream, Peter and I, we done. are he going well to start. Gaming. So thanks, Dino. Um, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start Diablo Four because that's hitting Game Pass on Thursday. So we're gonna I play Diablo Four. I wonder if that's crossplay because are you? What night are you guys doing that? It's Friday night. Friday. It's on Friday night with Peter and Mike. Yeah, and you're going. I know you night. go out. Your, that's that. I'll never yeah. get on on that unless things cancel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, if it was like got, Saturday, I, mean, I would just make that like a, a second Saturday stream or something. I mean, um, you've gotten you've gotten on with us once in a while. I have, but um, that's usually when like my standing plans cancel. 
because I have like standing yeah. Friday well, plans. If, yeah, which which is always good. If yeah. they do, you know, you can hit us up. Yeah. Because we always is, is play keeping, keeping similar level with you guys because those games like that work better when you're of like similar level. That's the problem. Yeah, and I, well, and I have no idea, you know. I just I have no idea what uh, what I'm in for. I mean, I played Diablo three, and I love Diablo three. Beat Diablo three. Um, Diablo four is not Diablo three, and Diablo three wasn't the Diablo three you know it as because you got onto it when it became console. That game was a shit show right. when it hit PC. That game That's was what a I heard. dumpster fire for like three years. And once they moved was, to the console and they revamped the the loot module and started introducing sets and greater rifts and stuff like that, it became an, like one of my top Diablo games. Easy. Uh, it's, it's an amazing game. It's, I loved when by the uh, time it came out. By the time it came out, what it was, I played when I was playing it. I haven't gotten to have Billy back into it in a while. Uh, very dull. Story's fun. I enjoyed the story. Um, the classes are fun enough to play, particularly through the story. Um, when you start hitting in game, it got very boring. Uh, and I'm hoping they make do the similar motions with it. Like they did with three and it turns around and it becomes a game. I just fall in love with for like ages. Uh, I'm still waiting for him to kind of get it there though. Right now. All right. Well, we're going to play through the story. Find out. You're going to enjoy it. I tr- trust me. I think you'll really right. enjoy the story. All right. Well, we're gonna find out on on Friday because that's what we're doing. I, I, we've already we've already got that in the bag. That's happening. Yeah. Another one that's a fun one to play is Diablo Two. If you guys can get in a group together in that. That's mm-hmm. a fun one to oh, through. I've played Diablo Two. Absolutely played Diablo Two. It's a little bit harder to so. go back to now, given how easy to play Three is. I didn't think I'd ever say that when I picked up Three that I would think it would edge out too but having gone back and played the remaster of two i find myself enjoying the gameplay in three better than two and they just they didn't do yeah, enough I've... quality of life improvements to make the fighting more flexible and diablo 2's fighting style feels very difficult to kind of go back to because of how base bare bones basic it is yeah all right well zombie since you're saying woot diablo you're gonna have to you have to come come be in our chat Friday night, man. Come hang out. You kinda have the to front come over to, to, to our Rumble the last of us. Now everybody freaking loves that game. I never got into it, but uh, people love that I game. I liked the first one. I, I really enjoyed the first one. Now the second one is the one that I heard uh, that is n- kind of a it's a mixed bag. Either you lean into the new story and you like the new character, or you're gonna hate it. Right. That just kind of how it is. On, well, most people on Rumble aren't going to like it. Eh, it I didn't like it either. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, leave it at that. It's, <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. That, that's that's. I don't want to get you in trouble on YouTube. It's a little awakened. Yes, it's not sleeping. No, it's not. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it at that. So. Is a uh, mad yeah, baby. Yeah, my channel has um, a couple anyway. of streams coming up. It's got the one video coming up on Wednesday. Um, I'm covering, I'm doing another, what I consider rare game experiences. This one I'm covering Afterburner um, because there's not, I don't feel like there was a lot of cabinets like Afterburner in the arcade. And it was one Loved of the early Afterburner. ones to put all, a lot of the things that were in that cabinet together, which made it kind mm. of a really cool experience. So that's what that I'm and outrun. Uh, yeah, outrun was another one. I feel like Afterburner did more because it did pixel and uh, screen scale, uh, scaling and and rotation. Yes. So it did a lot of extra stuff that well you wouldn't see in things like outrun because you wouldn't need the whole screen to rotate in outrun. Like you, no, you no, 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 no. You're right. The screen. Yes, the screen turn yes you're right but i'm talking the cabinet itself was like after now afterburner's cabinet was better because you also went up down yes but yes. but af but outruns cabinet with that side to side motion was really cool too yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this would, be, this would be a great video. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I want to talk about. That one a little bit on then. And then I'm are you talking about the Friday cabinets or, or are you talking about I'll the games? Another longer form video out. And then I'm debating if I want to do if I, because there's there's a video I've had on my mind that I kind of want to do, but I don't know that it's going to work anywhere. It's probably just going to fall on its face because it's another one of those like my game mechanic series that I love that series, but no one else does. <laughs> Are you, are you, everyone hates it. Are you, <laughs> which wait a minute, which one, uh, game mechanics for the most part that, that, that series, no one likes, like, there's, a, there's a handful of it people that love that series a... and then everybody else would just, just assume not see it. <laughs> those people are stupid. Those, those people are stupid. Uh, so I'm the sorry. Other those, the, that is, that the, is the deeper, a fantastic deep series that I kind of wanted to get into. And I've got the script <sighs> written up. It's a matter of recording the Makes voiceover me. and getting into it. Because the first topic I wanted to cover was AI, um, because that's becoming more and more of a heated topic. And the idea behind that series is specifically not to lean you one way or another, just give you pros and cons, and then let you make up your own mind and possibly do a stream that specifically focuses on that topic and invite everybody to come on and try to have a few guests of discerning opinions on so that we can kind of like just beat the crap out of each other and the audience can beat the crap out of us discussing it. And everybody can come walk away with their own opinion on it. Um, the big thing on that series is when I write those up, I want people making up their own minds, not going by any opinion I may have. Uh, that's not the takeaway I want people to have out of that. The idea is to get you to think more critically about topics that are that I think are kind of important and make up your own mind and think a little bit. That's what that's supposed to be. Now, whether or not that'll work is another story. <laughs> Most of these ideas that I have that's a, don't work. That's a, that's a story for us. Let's be honest, it don't work. Another, another day. <laughs> I, I I don't know why. It makes me angry that that more people don't. Well, game mechanics, it's, what's funny uh, is is people will special, specifically, particularly on the ColecoVision, will be like, well, you're not doing anything original here. And I'm like, you've obviously not looked at my channel. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you've yeah, you've go, not done deep enough, yeah. you know, dug deep enough into my catalog, and you won't because the stuff that's truly unique on YouTube or the stuff that's covered very rarely on YouTube – is covered very rarely because nobody wants it. <laughs> Apparently Them's nobody wanted Donkey Kong. <laughs> nobody wanted Donkey Kong or, or shmups either. So I, yeah. I feel you. So there's just videos that you do that cover topics that you do because you want to do them and you know, they're probably not going to get the views. They're just not. And you just got to walk into it. Except in that fact. <laughs> It's just how it works sometimes. Sometimes you do a video for you, and that's enough. So that one may be coming out. I may pivot. I may do like another Rise and Fall because I would love to do another one of those. Um, a bunch of people gave me a lot of good suggestions on the last one. Um, I think Bullfrog Gaming, the ones who did uh, Dungeon Keeper, was mentioned. A couple of people really wanted to see Sunsoft covered. Um, which I already kind of had slated anyway, because I love that company from the early, um, from 8-bit to 16-bit. Um, and then there's a bunch of other companies to cover on that one too, as far as they're kind of like, you know, rise and fall or kind of more of a fall from grace. Not all the companies are going to be defunct, but a lot of them will be on that series. Um, I have one of those out right now. It's on Midway. Um, and those take a while because I have to be able to not only come up and yeah. find the reasons as to where they started and kind of where they went and kind of where they fell, but not get too lost in the, um, uh, financial jargon that I'm not really qualified to speak on as far as midway you know, when they start to go <laughs> mid midway. And I, and I'm not midway was a, was a tough one to watch, but not because of, not because of you, but, <laughs> Because I learned nothing about video game auto repair, <laughs> which is a bit more clear about. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, that one was a hard watch because, you know, obviously I was 
around the game journalism side during Midway. Midway, I was very close with Midway, with the folks in Midway. And of course, through Midway, I was also very close with the folks at Acclaim who published a lot of Midway stuff under like the Iguana Entertainment and uh, that whole thing. And, and it brings me back now to, you know, Warner Brothers and how they have just, how they have just pissed all over that catalog. And took all the games away from Anstream. I mean, it was just well. It, it, also it, it's like monetizing it's like, everything. Even Mortal Kombat One is pretty heavily monetized at this point. When it really hasn't been that monetized before, there were things you could buy before, but it was pretty minimal. Now it seems to be like, and now it's, it's part yeah. games as a service with invasions, and part the store, and how they want to do their yeah. model. And it's kind of irritated a lot of people. Uh, and for a while, they were even charging for, like, when you bought, uh, when you got On Demand, they didn't initially add in the voice lines. You were having to pay, like, an extra $10 for those. And I'm like, the character was already 10 or $20. Why are you charging me for voice lines separate? I don't care who you got to do these voice lines. It's nice you got the actual actor to do the voice lines. I shouldn't have to incur an extra $10 for that cost. That was your call. Right. You wanted to bring him in. Right. You wanted the voice actor. I think they kind of rolled that decision back, but it was it was a thing for a bit. So, but I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. It's eleven o'clock. My cat has been screaming. Yeah. I need to come downstairs and spend some time. One a.m. here. So I'm going to be a zombie tomorrow when I wake up and go to work, and you are too, because it's like one a.m. your time. So it is I, one a.m. my time. I've got to get us both out of here for the evening. Uh, thank you everybody for popping in and for hanging out with us as long as you did. Um, mm-hmm. You guys have been awesome. Uh, for how long you guys have been hanging out and chilling out with us tonight. Thank you so much for being a part of the show and being a part of the channel, especially. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys again. So, you know what? Have a great night and have a gaming. Yeah. Play on gamers. Night, everybody. <laughs>